A crow in war, three in a red, says, gain control of target creature for as long as the crow in war remains on the battlefield. Number two, until your next turn, creatures your opponent control attack each combat if able. Okay, so let's see. I cast it, I gain control of a thing. Cool. Next turn. Um, don't do anything. Oh yeah, they have to swing, so then, oh, that's kind of weird. That's kind of weird, because like, I'm imagining it's chapter two. Until next turn, creatures your opponent control attack each combat if able. So I can't really do anything to take advantage of that until it's my opponent's turn, then they have to attack. This is each tapped creature deals damage to itself equal to its power. Okay, the way that I actually am reading the Acro in War is this this is kind of like a imagine this conceptually as a red sweeper. Okay? You steal the biggest card they have. On the next turn, I still have it up, and then my opponent has to attack into this creature, allowing me to block or trade or something like this. And then each tapped creature deals damage to itself equal to its power. Perfect. All the ones that they just attacked with, they they zoop themselves. So um, this is a very shitty, sketchy, roundabout kind of red sweeper. Um, it's on turn four. So then on turn five, they'd have to attack. So then on my turn six, I'd zap them all. This has some merit. I think that I would call this constructed two out of five because I think there's something there. Limited, pro probably a four out of five or a five out of five. Just due to the fact that limited boards tend to clog up. There tends to be lots of trades that you're trying to do. You can force bad trades to your opponent, get them to sweep their board. I mean, if you have a few big creatures and they attack into you, you just eat the small ones. The other ones just pop themselves. This seems extremely good and limited. <sighs> I was only gone for eight minutes, and now my buttons, they don't work. Ugh. An axe hardened in the forge. <sighs> All right, an axe hardened in the forge, one and double. Red. Legendary enchantment creature, demigod. An axe's power is typically equal to your devotion to red. Cool. Whenever an axe or another non-token creature you control dies, create a 1-1 one, one red satyr creature token. With this creature can't block. The creature at four or greater power, create two of those tokens instead. Oh my god. This is great. Imagine a red aggro deck where you're going wide-wise so yeah, this this is this is awesome. I love this card. Constructed, I'd give it a mm, mm, three out of five. I'd give it a three out of five. Three out of five. This is very good in a cavalcade deck. Because it makes a 1-1 one, one token. And after sweepers, it makes the token. And for that reason, I think it's very, very reliable. Uh, yeah, no, I'd give it three out of five and constructed because I can see an exact deck that it fits within very comfortably. Um, you know, red cavalcade of calamity. And it, it's also the potential to be a 3-3 three, three for three that makes a 1-1 one, one left over. So it is rather cool. There's also other weird things, like if you're a Rakdos Sacrifice, which I quite like, um, you have the ability to sacrifice things to make 1-1 one, one Satyr creature tokens and then sacrifice those creature tokens again as additional targets for more ping, 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 ping. So for that, at least 3 out of 5 and constructed. 4 limited, I'd give it like a 4 out of 5 because, well, maybe maybe more than that, because if it's, if it's like a 5-3, it's going to die and make a pair of 1-1s. One, yeah, I'd give it a 4 out of 5 and limited. 
it's not gonna like overtake the game, but it's going to be a big threat that leaves behind some residual babies. And residual babies are a good way to close out a game. That's why the American tradition is built around the phrase, throw babies at the problem. Arena Trickster, three and a red. Human Shaman, whenever you cast your first spell during each opponent's turn, put a plus one, plus one counter on Arena Trickster. Not good in Constructed, 0 out of 5. I mean, generally, for any of you who are curious why I am so quick to give things 0 out of 5 uh, statements, things die so quickly in Constructed that you often want the ability to do something now when I play it now. Or you want to be able to say, when this dies, something good should happen, you know? Or when it enters the battlefield, it does something and it does it now. Um, whenever there's something that needs time to build up, I just so quickly go to zero uh, with my rating. Because someone plays an Arena Trickster, they pass the turn to me, I give the turn back to them, they swing with a 3-3 dealing 3 damage and play another creature, and then I sweep the whole board. And all that's happened is on turn 4, my opponent played a 3-3 and I took 3 damage. So things like that where I'm just like... Anyways, in Limited, I guess I'd give this a 4 out of 5. This is a type of card that exists in Limited where when you start to get to 5-5 five, five, and 6-6 six, six sized creatures, they just start to be a pain in the ass to deal with. Arena Trickster is a 3-3 three, three for 4, which is kind of a very mediocre, fine stat line. And occasionally, this will be a 4-mana four 4-4. Four, four. And then become like a 5-5 five, five occasionally. And that's enough for me to give it like a like a 4 limited maybe a three yeah i'd probably say three i'm i'm, I'm never gonna be like fuck yeah we're a trickster yeah man um but it's fine it's fine aspect of manticore two and a red flash enchant creature when aspect of manticore enters the battlefield enchanted creature gains first strike until end of turn enchanted creature gets plus two plus oh huh I mean, this is basically a fine combat trick. This is fine. It's another one of those things that's fine. This is a fine limited card. Um, you know, it's a flash enchantment, so it does have the upside of being able to snip someone down when you're tapped out. <clears throat> we just got done looking at this thing that can proc on spells on the opponent's turn. Um, there's no way this is going to be helpful in Constructed because in Constructed this assumes that there's going to be blocks set up frequently, which um, rarely on turn three when you're an aggro deck are you going to be looking to hopefully get some type of trade going, something like this. It's quite expensive in a Constructed deck. Uh, limited though, I'd give it a two out of five. You, I think it's a 23rd card in your draft deck. You'd be, you'd be comfortable putting this puppy in. Blood Aspirant. I think I mispronounced Aspirant. Is, is, is it Aspirant? There's a word in Magic the Gathering that I felt like I was always pronouncing correctly. And I think it was this one. And I think I'm wrong. I think it's Aspirant. Hold on. Hold on. All right, let me go to the Merriam-Webster Dictionary app. Fuck yeah, I love this app. Let me hear it. Let me hear you say it. Say it. Say the word. Load. Oh my god. All right. Wi Fi. Enable. <sighs> Aspirant. No, I was correct. I'm the fucking man. Blood Aspirant, one in a red. Whenever you sacrifice a permanent, put a plus one, plus one counter on Blood Aspirant. Whoa! Whoa! One in a red, sacrifice a creature or enchantment. Blood Aspirant deals one damage to target creature. That creature can't block this turn. Whoa! 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 Limited. I would not rate this super highly because there are not a lot of sacrifice a permanent keywords going around. Um, technically this can self-activate by sacrificing a creature or enchantment using that thing, but um, it's 
pretty big to sacrifice your own stuff. It's pretty substantial to try to like be killing your own shit in limited. So I'd give this like a two out of five, maybe three out of five in limited, but probably two. But Rakdos constructed that already has Priest of the Forgotten Gods, that already has Chandra. I mean, you just play Chandra and let the two one ones sacrifice themselves, and this is immediately a three three. I would give this like a three or four, maybe probably a four out of five in constructed. This is just a thing that gets really big really fast. Jesus. Wow. Yeah, I can imagine several several decks that this works in. I think that, you know, what we might say is something like uh, the Butcher, um, Blood Blood Horde Butcher, whatever it's called. Um, Dread Horde Butcher, Jesus. Um, that is such a good two drop that maybe there are so many good two drops that this one doesn't fit in, even though it's still an acceptable one. So, I mean, I still would say it's a very good constructed card as a result. Careless Celebrant, one in red. When Careless Celebrant dies, it deals two damage to target creature or planeswalker and opponent controls. Okay, so let's see. This is a very nice card in Limited because it's a 2-1 that also deals damage, so it can trade up. Um, so for that reason, it's very strong in Limited. I'd give it a 4 out of 5 in Limited. For Constructed... It can't deal damage to face. It can't deal damage to face, which I think is a problem. See, Footlight Fiend can shoot the face. Footlight Fiend can shoot the face. This can't shoot the face. So I'd give it a constructed one out of five, constructed two out of five. Limited, I'd give this a four. It's a very strong limited card. I like this one quite a bit. Maybe I should actually give it a five in limited because it does the two drop roll so well. But, you know, maybe. Maybe, maybe this is actually, yeah, I, maybe I give it a five limited rating. I mean, this this just makes me so happy to see because it gives the potential for two for wanting. So you can shut down aggression or you can just smash in. Um, I don't know. I don't know. I, I don't really know how to evaluate that one constructed, honestly. Dream Shaper Shaman. Jesus, five and a red. He's so expensive. All right. He's a 5-4, which is okay. At the beginning of your end step, you may pay two and a red and sacrifice a non-land permanent. If you do, reveal cards from the top of your library until you reveal a non-land permanent card. Put that card onto the battlefield and the rest on the bottom of your library in a random order. And it's an enchantment creature minotaur shaman. I want to say that this is a zero out of five card in Constructed. And I want to say it's like a one out of five card in Limited. The reason I'm saying it's one out of five in Limited is I'm imagining, okay, it's the beginning of my end step, and then I pay three and I'm sacking a non-land permanent, okay? Typically that's going to be a creature, typically that's going to be an enchantment, and then it starts digging in my library, and whatever gets revealed that's a non-land permanent whatever non-land permanent gets revealed gets placed onto the battlefield so like, what if I sack a small creature, and then just get a small creature? I mean, like, I just keep, I, I, can, I, I replace a thing. Like, if I have a 1-1, one, one, I can sack it and maybe get, like, a 2-3 or some shit. Um, this is very flavorful, and the red is random uh, style. But, you know, I don't know. It's 
Um, replace your food for something better. So I have to get a food out, and then I have to spend six mana to play a 5-4, and then I have to have an additional three mana available, or I have to wait a turn and then spend three mana, and then sacrifice the food, and then cross my fingers, and hope to God I get something dope. It's nine mana. Nine mana is a lot of mana on the turn it's played. One out of five limited, maybe even zero out of five limited. I really don't like this card at all. Unless I'm going to keep digging in red and see something that's just like, holy fuck, it activates the Dream Shaper Shaman. But no, I, I give this a 1 out of 5. I mean, it's a 5, 4 for 6 is about what I'm looking at. Dream Stalker Manticore. Oh, I love the little sparkly galaxy brain action that's going on everywhere. Two and a, and a, and a fireball. Two and a red for an enchantment creature. Whenever you cast your first spell during each turn, Dreamstalker Manticore deals one damage to any target. Ah. Our first spell during each opponent's turn. Whoopsie doopsie. Um, a 4-2 for 3 is another common stat line that can feel pretty cool and pretty aggressive. Um, so, again, 3-2 for 3 is a common enough stat line uh, that you're like, eh, whatever, in limited, it's fine. A 4-2 for 3 is, again, it's kind of like, mm, okay, you know, all right. Um, it's an enchantment creature, Prox Constellation, Nifty Thrifty. This is kind of a 3 out of 5 limited card. Maybe, 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 maybe 3.2 out of 5. Like, it's barely above a 3 out of 5. It's definitely no 4 out of 5. Definitely better than a 2 out of 5. And therefore, <laughs> say 3 out of 5. Ah, yes. Deductive reasoning. Day 9 does it again. Good job, me. <laughs> I love his analysis. It's just so indefatigable. Escape Velocity. One red. It better be what I think it is. Enchanted Creature. Enchanted Creature gets plus 1, plus 0, oh, and has haste. Escape for one and a red. Exile two other cards from your graveyard. The Slippers. Do you remember the hasty slippers? The, the pasty, hasty slippers? Any card that has velocity has haste in it. <laughs> that art is crazy. It's pretty. It's pretty spectacular, man. Climbing up the column. Mm, yeah, okay. So what do we think about this? In general, I, I'm going to give it a 1 out of 5 in limited, a 0 out of 5 in constructed. In constructed, I think that there are better tools to give things haste. A lot of times if you're giving something haste, it's because you want it to crash through immediately, such as with um, Crackling Drake, you know, where it's like a 12-4 and then you want to give it haste. Having something that's sorcery, you know, to do that. Um, maximize Velocity. Seems like a better alternative to this. Now, what about for limited? Getting plus one, plus oh is pretty mediocre. If you're giving the thing haste, typically it means you're having mana left over. You know, like I'm giving a, on turn four, a three mana creature haste. I'm spending my fourth mana to give it haste. Um, I can't even imagine this being useful um, in that circumstance, because then you'd be quickly bonking yourself into what is likely a larger creature. No, 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 no. Zero out of five in limited, zero out of five in constructed. Bam, there he does. Fateful end. Oh my god, look at that mouth. Two and a red. Fateful end deals three damage to any target. Scry one. It's instant. Five out of five limited. It's removal. We love removal. It has upside of scry. It's instant speed. In constructed, zero out of five. Not because it's awful there, but because we have Scorching Dragon Fire that's like two mana and deals three damage. We have a lot of things like that. So, um,. Scorching Dragonfire is creatures and planeswalkers, and it exiles them. I don't actually know if red has a lot of direct burn damage to the face. Huh. Huh. I don't know. But I'm still going to say that this is like a 0 out of 5 in Constructed. 0 out of 5 in Constructed. Do I agree with myself? 
One out of five in constructed. Hedging! Five out of five in limited, though. Final Flare, two in a red. As an additional cost to cast the spell, sack a creature or enchantment. Final Flare deals five damage to target creature. Ooh. Zero out of five in constructed because it has this prohibitive cost that just targets creatures. If it was like deal five damage to target, yeah. in limited sacking to desperately kill a thing is a good old way to two for one yourself so i think this is has very marginal usage in limited so i'm going to give this a one out of five in limited a zero out of five in constructed flummoxed cyclops <laughs> look at him he's like, oh, what the fuck oh my god look at how absolutely flummoxed that poor boy oh my god look at his little face oh he's so sad Oh my god, he has a lot of forearm hair. Oh, three and a red. Hey, it's a four, four for four with reach. Whenever two or more creatures your opponents control attack, flummoxed cyclops can't block this combat. Ah. So if your opponent's swinging with a lot, it's a little useless. I do think that this is, it's a four, four for four with reach. So I'd give it like a 2 out of 5, 3 out of 5 in limited. Uh, if you're on the aggro bend, then you can be swinging for 4 a lot. Um, so if you have like curved out and then you're slamming a 4-4 four, four and you're swinging away, uh, that's that's pretty tight. The, the interesting thing is, again, imagine the clogged up boards that are somewhat frequent in limited situations. If your opponent is swinging with a flyer, alone the flummox cyclops can just eat the flyer if your opponent is swinging with a flyer and a ground dude okay flummox cyclops can't block but often if you have another creature you just trade with the ground dude flummox cyclops can get owned if your opponent has like two flyers and this can never block but then you have a four four and you just keep swinging in this is just a very aggressively statted card and the fact that it can't block i, I think is less relevant i'd actually give this a three out of five um, maybe maybe even like 3.2 out of 5 Ooh. I'd give it a pie out of 5 because a 4-4 four, four swinging in every single turn is quite a threat especially with the amount of instants and flash enchantments that are in the set that you can just like play on the Flummox Cyclops I love Gruul dude I love playing Gruul in drafts you just beat the shit out of people it's great Furious Rise 2 and a red can we just appreciate that that is an illustration and it has all the quality, like, like you can feel the lighting in this illustration. I mean, this is amazing. You can see the sort of light playing off the mist here. And the light coming from the heat. Oh my god, this is incredible. Okay, enchantment for two and a red. At the beginning of your end step, if you control a creature with power 4 or greater, exile the top card of your library. You may play that card until you exile another card with Furious Rise. Okay. Wow. This is a limited situational one like two out of five like if you are red green this can be extremely good because it effectively means you draw two cards like if you do your usual draw and then uh oh it's the beginning of your end step okay so at the beginning of your end step if you like draw a land and then it's your turn again and you draw something you can just play the land right away um so it can turn into you basically drawing two cards a turn but, I mean, if you lose that four power creature, then Furious Rise is doing nothing. So you need Furious Rise to, to successfully exile a card, play it, and then Furious Rise has replaced itself. So I'd give it two out of five in limited. I, th there's a couple of these types of enchantments that have felt like, I don't see it being consistently good, but when it is good, 
it's insane. Like, if you have, hell, even this flummoxed Cyclops and maybe, like, five or six other 4X cards, 5X cards, and then you play a Furious Rise, like, you can begin to shit on shit. Ah, feels good. Uh, what do I think about this being in a red deck? This is a really interesting sort of red card draw if you are some sort of thick red deck. I, I don't know anything about how big red works. This clearly only works in like a big red or in some sort of red green with thick dudes. Um, I have no idea. Maybe one out of five, two out of five in constructed. Like, again, it, ideas happen when I see this. It's not like I look at it and go, oh, that won't work and move through and feel like I've exhausted the possibilities quickly. I'm going to give it a 2 out of 5 in Constructed and a 2 out of 5 in Limited. Oh, Sheriff, you're upside down. Everyone, we're going to take a quick break. Yeah. Yep, I can absolutely scratch your chin. Uh-oh. Uh-oh, are we getting really comfy? I hope you can hear this cat. This cat's always happy to be pet, but sometimes this cat is really happy to be pet. You're such a good cat. Yep, I can absolutely scratch you there. God, can you hear that? Oh, he has a loud purse. Yeah, just turn your volume up. Hero of the games for two and a red. Yeah, you're my little sweet princess. I love you. Yeah, he's such a good cat. God, I love my girls. Hero of the games, two and a red. A human soldier. Again, look at that three, two for three stat line. Very common and uh, common stat line limited. Whenever you cast a spell that targets hero of the games, creatures you control get plus one, plus oh until end of turn. <laughs> I don't like this creatures you control get plus one plus oh till end of turn. I don't like it. I don't like it that much because the cards I've seen it on have been relatively weak on the toughness side. Uh, uh, maybe something like a red white aggro. The white goes wide, the red goes big and blows shit up. So I, I'd give it a two out of five in limited, zero out of five in constructed because it's just very pricey for a weak stat line. Heroes of the Revel. It's a 4-4 four, four for 4 and a red. When Heroes of the Revel enters the battlefield, create a 1-1 one, one red satyr creature token with this creature can't block. Whenever you cast a spell that targets Heroes of the Revel, creatures you control get plus 1, plus 0 till end of turn. Eh, so it's like 5-5 five, five of stats for 5. Hey, you're a good cat. Yeah. Oh my god, you can just hear the purrs. It's so good. Yeah, 2 out of 5. In limited, maybe one out of five. Zero out of five in constructed. Impending doom. Two in a red. A sword in the air. Ah, oh, it's so good. So good. Look at this. this tied sword. It's amazing. Enchant creature. Enchant creature gets plus three, plus three, and attacks each combat if able. Damn. When enchanted creature dies, impending doom deals three damage to that creature's controller. Damn. Damn. Okay. Oh my god, you're just so happy. Can you hear this cat? Oh, it's a good cat. So this is uh, 0 out of 5 in Constructed. Uh, because, again, you can let it resolve, kill the creature, it deals 3 damage to the controller, and then you've 2 for 1 to end out 3 to the face. So that's bad! If it is in, whoa, you're just, you're just sitting there purring. You're not even doing anything. God, I love this cat. This is the best cat. I love having cats that just sit there, look at me, and purr. Pending doom. Okay, so um, in limited, it runs the risk. This is weaker than the other flash enchantments. With the flash enchantments, you can flash them in. The creature can do the combat trick and have the uh, buffs and bonuses of the enchantment. And then when the, when the turn resolves, 
you've like maybe killed their creature for free, and then when your creature dies with the enchantment, you've sort of two for two instead of two for one. So I'd give this like a one out of five in limited. I can imagine putting this in as a 23rd card. You're just like, okay, I have a trampler. You give a plus three, plus three, I'm going to swing in for some extra damage. But outside of that, meh. Incendiary Oracle, one in a red. It's a 2-2 that has fire breathing. Incendiary Oracle gets plus one, plus oh till end of turn. If a creature dealt damage by Incendiary Oracle would die, exile it instead. Okay, so it's a solid bear. It's a solid little bear that can swell up. I'd give it a three out of five. It's fine. You're fine having it. It's fine. It's fine. Maybe a two out of five. I don't know. I don't even remember what the difference between two out of five and three out of five is in terms of my own evaluation. So I'm just going to call this three out of five. Very flavorful. Very nice. Infuriate. One red. Target creature gets plus three, plus two until end of turn. It's a combat trick at instant speed where someone is mad. Things like this, things like giant growth effects, this is like a fine one to have one of, zero or one of, so this is a limited two out of five. This is a constructed zero out of five. We don't need combat tricks like this. Iroas's Blessing, three and a red. Oh my god, look at that dude just punching that Minotaur right in his horn head. Enchant creature you control. When Iroas's Blessing enters the battlefield, it deals four damage to target creature or planeswalker and opponent controls. Shannon Creature gets plus one, plus one. Huh. So this is a limited um, almost five out of five. It's a very good limited card. The thing that's weird about it is if I cast the Blessing on a creature, you kill the creature, I'm still two for one. Um... What's nice about this is it deals four damage, which is a big, big amount of damage. When it lands, it triggers Constellation. It deals four damage, which is a lot. It still gives plus one, plus one. <laughs> Chaucer says, so is Dana memorizing all of these ratings so that when he goes to build decks, uh, he will pick only the five out of five cards? That would be pretty impressive. <laughs> well, let me be honest. 5 out of 5 does not mean put this in instead of a 3 out of 5. What it means is that they're the types of cards that you might start a build with, that you might want to build um, a deck knowing that they're going to be able to have real impact and real power. 3 out of 5 cards could show up frequently, but they might be marginal or situational, or you might take a card that is a 3 out of 5 and build an entire deck to support it. Like a Johnny's Pride Mate is a 2-2 two, two for 2 that gets bigger whenever there are whenever you heal so this is one of these things that would rarely ever be a five out of five type of card because you need to have other things be there to support it and all this sort of stuff but if you had like a healing deck and there's a lot of things that are getting benefits from healing all over the place the johnny's pride mate being one of them all of a sudden this three out of five two out of five style card starts to become quite a threat because everything's built around it uh so I'd give, like, for instance, I'd give it a Johnny's Primate, like a 3 out of 5. 2 out of 5 and constructed something out of that. Uh, but Iroas' Blessing, I'd give a 0 out of 5 in constructed because red decks are typically going to just be beating the shit out of you early with 3 mana or less cards. Um, why would I want to deal 4 damage? when I could like have a Domri's Blessing, give something plus one, plus one, and then it immediately deals its damage, and then so on and so forth. So in, in Constructed, Iros's Blessing looks a lot like a weaker Domri's Ambush sort of thing, but uh, Wagadwes. That's, that's what I think. Four out of five in Limited, zero out of five in Constructed. Irreverent Revelers. <laughs> Someone had fun. Two in a red when Irreverent, Irreverent Revelers enters the battlefield, destroy an artifact, or Revelant Revelers gains haste until end of turn. Ah. An acceptable limited card. In Constructed, there are... I'll have to see the rest of the set, but I can imagine... Like, if this was... Ah, oh, 
Ah, shit. Yeah, probably it's still too weak, because there's one mana destroy target artifact already in red. So the fact that it's three is a little expensive for just destroying an artifact. And then, so for that reason, I mean, anything that's not quite good just hits zero out of five. We don't, we don't see this in Constructed, I don't think. Nyx Born Brute. Awesome. A 7-3 for five. Fuck yeah. Limited. I'm going to give this a two out of five. I really shouldn't in limited. I should just be like, oh my god, it has three power. But come on, or three toughness. But it has seven power? Come on, man. Seven power? Yeah, all right. Crashing down gates. Man, just give me a little bit of trample, huh? Give me a little bit of trample, and all of a sudden, Nyxborn Brute is crushing it. Nyxborn Brute, an enchantment creature. Ooh! Man, I, I'm telling you, this is going to trade with that 3-1 cat later on, and I'm going to feel real embarrassed, but I don't care, man. It's going to trigger Constellation. I'm going to feel proud of myself. I'm going to feel good. Oh, man, there's going to be some green that's going to give some trample. I'm going to put on the next born brew. It's going to feel so good. Oh. Zero out of five in constructed, two out of five in limited. Omen of the Forge, one in a red. Enchantment Flash. When it enters the battlefield, it deals two damage to any target. Sacrifice Omen of the Forge, scry two. Four out of five. Um, two damage for two mana is a little bit weak, but it is flash, which means that we can, in response, do it. Contributes to devotion, and we can sack it to scry. I really like these omen of the whatevers. The omen cycle is dope. This is one of the weaker of the omen cards, because the other omen cards, as far as I could tell, were quite good. Um, I haven't seen a lot of devotion to red references throughout here. So, you know. Meh. Yet again, another 1-3 for 2 enchantment creature. This is Red's version, Oread of Mountain's Blaze, that we can pay a bunch to discard and draw an acceptable card to put in limited. Um, I, I might even call this like 3 out of 5 in limited because it just fills the 2-drop slot fine, can get rid of land and draw us into something good. And it's two mana. There you go. Yeah. Ox of Agonis. Three and two red for a four two ox. When it enters the battlefield, discard your hand, then draw three cards. Escape for two red. Exile eight other cards from your graveyard. Escapes the plus one plus encounter on it. Five out of five limited, five out of five limited, five out of five limited, five out of five out of five out of five out of five limited, five out of five limited. For constructed, I have a real issue with this being in red with five mana. Because Ox of Agonis says that when it enters the battlefield, discard your hand, then draw three cards. When is that best? When you don't have a hand, when your when your hand is empty. So you play it and just draw three cards. So now you have a four, two, and draw three for five, which is in red. Maybe if there's some sort of like mono red burn only. Maybe if you just went like burn, burn, burn. If Faithless Looting was still a card, so you could just fill up your graveyard with a bunch of stuff, including Ox of Agonis, smush that guy down there. Big red alt superstar, yeah, maybe. This is a weird card for constructed, so I'm gonna say like one out of five because I I have some ideas, but for limited, I think this is probably a five because you regularly empty everything and then you smash this down and just draw a bunch. So yeah, um, this seems very, very, very good and limited and I'll have the ability to, even if I had to like discard two cards and draw three cards, when this dies, I can escape and then just draw three cards. Phoenix of the Ash, uh oh. One and two red for a flying haster. Phoenix of the Ash gets plus two plus oh until end of turn. Okay, that's kind of like a interesting costly fire breathing. The flying haste uh, is pretty relevant. 
we can escape for four and exile three others and make it a 3-3 three, three with Flying in Haste. That is a very, very strong card in Limited. Probably give it a four out of five. Probably give it a four out of five. Maybe, maybe even more than that. Dang. Constructed, I, I don't think it's very good. I don't think so. I mean... I'll be honest with you. In Constructed, a three mana 2-2 two, two flyer with haste is pretty threatening, especially when after the board is cleared, it can just recur as a 3-3 three, three and smash in the face. I think the Phoenix of Ash gets plus 2 plus 0 oh till end of turn is not the relevant one for the analysis, I think. I actually, weirdly, I think this is actually good and constructed. I think this is actually quite good and constructed. Exiling three other cards from your graveyard. Like, if you have a mono-red aggro deck that's not Cavalcade of Calamity, and this is one of your tools to get in there, it dies, you have no cards in hand, you escape to exile three others, swing in. Haste is... The haste flying... Gross. The haste flying is the big one that I'm just like, man, that's pretty good. Like... Yeah, I'm going to give this 3 out of 5 in Constructed. I'm really interested in doing something with this in Constructed. For Limited, I think I'd give it a 4 out of 5. Maybe a 5 out of 5 as well. Huh, yeah. It's not Legendary. Smash through a bunch of them. It's, it's interesting also, too, to consider just, like, hasting it out, then the following turn, just making it a 4-2, swinging it again, so that's 6 damage. Then your opponent kills it, and you just escape it, and swing it in again. It, it does a lot by itself. Um, portent of Betrayal. 3 and a red. Sorcery. Gain control of target creature until end of turn. Untap that creature if it, ga it gains haste on the turn. Scry 1. Okay, so it's active treason and scry 1. This is a limited 2 out of 5, 1 out of 5-ish thing. I, I like to say, if this is like your 14th pick, or your 13th pick, you're like, okay. Sure. Um, you're never first picking this. This is, an this is again, it's kind of like your Cosmotronic wa Wave Rivers Rebuke finishing type thing. I can't break through. I run this boom, bash in. But, I mean, nothing about this screams incredibility. The hippie says, if we put Scry on a bad card, will it be good? Scry, I think, is like a really interesting experiment to sort of like tack on to cards to like pump them up or down. It's kind of like a balancing widget. Like, once upon a time, I heard a card game designer um, talk about how uh, in a game of theirs, they came up with a mana system of what should be 1 and 2 and 3 and 4 and 5 cost. And once they felt like they had it, they just doubled everything. So anything that was 1 became 2 and anything that was 2 became 4 and so on. You, you know what fucking doubling means. Um, <clears throat> and the reason for this was just to be able to have things, just to get a little bit more wiggle room for balancing. To where they're like, ooh, this 4 costing card is actually a little strong, but it's not so strong that I would bump it to a 6. So let me just make it a 5. Whereas, if it was a two-mana card, and they had to choose between two and three, you're sort of stuck between a rock and a hard place. Now, Magic the Gathering has been around for ages and ages and ages and ages, so they don't have the ability to just go, all right, guys, we're just doubling the cost of everything. Woo! Um, so the idea of using, like, Scry as being maybe, like, a half point of value here or there is a really interesting uh, one. Perforos, bronze blooded, four and a red, legendary enchantment creature god, indestructible as long as your devotion to red is less than five. Perforos isn't a creature. Other creatures you control have haste. It's a seven six, 
you may put a red creature card or an artifact creature card from your hand onto the battlefield, sacrifice it at the beginning of the next end step. Oh, shit. Other creatures you control have haste. Well, I, I think... I think this is the weakest of the gods that we've seen. I would give this a 4 out of 5 in Constructed. I would also not give it a 5 out of 5 in Limited. Because maybe 4 out of 5 for Limited too. Here's the thing. In Limited... On turn five, you play this, and if your devotion is less than five, like you're not really going to be able to do anything with this at all. There's no advantage to begin doing. Compare this to the black god. When any creature dies, you can pay two life and draw a card. It can start doing stuff the turn that it's played. In draft, imagine playing this on turn five, and then next turn, I'll play a creature with haste. Maybe I sh if I had played the creature instead of Perforos the previous turn, I would be able to attack with it right now. Eh. Um, eh. So, so I, I'm starting to like struggle to see the real amazing spots for this. I mean, you'll probably take it if you're red, and you'll probably just get your devotion to red to be five, and then you'll be having a seven six with indestructible, which is terrifying. Um, and then also its ability paying three to put a red creature or an artifact creature so we couldn't run this in gruel and be like playing green creatures for three from our hand uh, and then you sacrifice it at the beginning of the next end step creatures you control have haste yeah maybe this works in fires of invention hello sheriff you're a very sweet cat yeah Listen to this purring. Listen to this purring. Now, the thing that does interest me is Big Red. Big Red with flyers. Ooh, yeah. So I'm just going to give it a 4 out of 5 and a 4 out of 5. Like, constructed, I can envision... Like, this obviously doesn't fit into an aggressive red deck. I think it would actually feel kind of weird to try to make an aggressive red god. I, I like the direction that they went in with this. Paradigm Sorts says, if you're cheating things in with Fires, do you really need to cheat things in with this too? I think of this more as a 7-6 with Indestructible with Fires of Invention. That's being being the big thing. All right. Perforosis Intervention. Oh, what a good cat. Choose one. Create an X1 red elemental creature token with Trample and Haste. Sacrifice it at the beginning of the next end step. This is hilarious. It deals twice X damage to target creature or planeswalker. So if I did two and a red, I could deal four damage. If I did three and a red, I could deal six damage. I mean, this is obviously an incredibly good limited card because it's big, juicy removal. Um, and if there's nothing on board, we can make like, you know, a seven, one red trampler. It's very nice as a way to deal Nyssa six damage after she has plus one. So, I mean, with that in mind, I think Perforos' intervention is constructed-wise. Two out of five, because I can imagine uses for it, but I can't imagine, like, a deck for it. Maybe even a 1 out of 5 in Constructed. For Limited, I mean, I guess I have to say 5. Yeah, because Removal and Hasty Guy. Yeah, 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 yeah. I agree with myself. I'm going to say a 1-ish, 2-ish out of 5 for Constructed. Yeah, I guess I have to say 2 out of 5 because, again, I can imagine nice situations like Nissa, hit me with the land. I blow up your Nissa and I have some mana left over. Cavalcade? How does it work with Cavalcade of Calamity? 
As in, like, I would play a 1-1 one, one and swing and deal one damage. Because Cavalcade says that if you attack with something that has one power... If this said create X11 one, one red elemental creature tokens with trample and haste, and this would just be absolute ownage with Cavalcade. Satyr's Cunning, a red. Create a 1-1 one, one red satyr creature token with this creature can't block, and you can just keep exiling. You keep making 1-1 one, one red satyr creature tokens, and hell yeah, and then there you go, and you just keep pumping stuff out, yeah. Oh yeah, 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 Lucobus. I read, I read, I read this the the way that you read this when I first saw this. I thought it was create X one one red elemental creature tokens. I was like, ah, and then I like was reading it out loud. And a few seconds later, my brain was like, oh, oh, it's an X one, so it'd be like a seven one. Anyways, Satyr's cunning. Create a one one red satyr creature token with this creature can't block. Exile two other cards from your graveyard. Um, the problem I have with this in constructed is that it can be recurred to make multiple one ones. So. Maybe that has some value for a cavalcade deck that's trying to just continue to get one ones, but um, things like a footlight fiend, or that like one one first strike grim initiate that when it dies you amass one, things like that feel like better choices as one drops and kind of have a similar function. In constructed. I'd give it probably a 0 out of 5, probably. I think you have to. In limited, I think a 1 out of 5. I can maybe see a deck where you, like, make a 1-1 one, one and then you can, like, sacrifice it and that buffs some other things, maybe. But this is sorcery speed. The exile cost for the escape is low. The total mana cost for the escape is on the higher end. I mean, what are you going to do? Oh, my God, I'm... Two one ones that can't block. And it's just, I mean, the best case scenario does not get me excited. So maybe one out of five. Scofos Maze Warden. Oh my god, look at the. Is that beard oil in your beard, Scofos? My god, it's just so well kept. Three and a red. Scofos Maze Warden gets plus one, plus one till end of turn. Oh, plus one, minus one until end of turn. Oh. Whenever another creature becomes the target of an ability of a land you control named Labyrinth of Scophos, you may have Scophos Maze Warden fight that creature. Okay, that's pretty tight. Uh, in a limited sense, this is a fine card. I have no idea what Labyrinth of Scophos is. I have no idea what Labyrinth of Scophos does, but whatever. Yeah, uh, uh, constructed. I probably say zero because I mean it's just a three four for four that can like kind of twilly willy itself. Um, limited probably three out of five, two out of five. It's, just, it's a very fine, very meh ish card. The real question is what does Labyrinth of Scophos does, and we will not find out until we see it later. So uh. Scophos War Leader, ah, oh, four and a red. You can pay one. On this 4-5, to sack another creature or an enchantment, Scophos War Leader gets plus 1, plus 0, oh, and gains menace until end of turn. So, for instance, this has some synergy with this. My 1-1s one get sacked to give me a 5-5 five five with menace. Eh, things like this. For this reason, I think Scophos War Leader is a perfectly acceptable 5. What the fuck? Perfectly acceptable 5-5, five 4-5 five, five mana. 4-5 for 5 mana. Talking is hard. It's perfectly acceptable, so I'd give it a 3 out of 5 in limited due to the fact that, you know, even if your opponent has, like, a huge creature and you can't really swing in, sack one of your babies, get some damage in with this war leader. Um, menace, I, I really like in limited a lot as a keyword. Like, it, I, I have won a lot of games with just, like, Boggard Brute getting some extra pings in. Um... Yeah, and a 5-mana 4-5 is still a pretty acceptable stat line. So I'll give it a 3 out of 5 uh, limited, 0 out of 5 constructed. It's just it's just a large dude. You need more than a large dude in constructed. Stampede Rider, 2 and a red. Creature Satyr. 
It's two, three trampler at the beginning of each combat. If you control a creature with power four or greater, Stampede Rider gets plus one, plus one until end of turn. Hey, this is a very good card. It's a three mana, three, four with trample that will often be able to be procced with the cards that I have seen so far. I really like a card like this. I mean, even a three mana, two, three doesn't make me feel that upset. Uh, it's a good blocker for a lot of two drops. It's not a game ending threat on its own, but I, I think that it's gonna wind up with uh, quite a lot of efficiency. What? No, no, get me out of there. Even things like the Scophos War Leader procs it. Scophos Maze Warden, you can just pay the one to proc it, you know, things like this. Storm Herald. Now let me at least see something. Yeah. Storm Herald. Two and a red. Creature Human Shaman. Okay, it's a hasty 3 2. When Storm Herald enters the battlefield, return any number of aura cards from your graveyard to the battlefield. Attach to creatures you control. Exile those auras at the beginning of your next end step. If those auras would leave the battlefield, exile them instead of putting them anywhere else. Huh. Three two Haster that brings back all your auras for another opportunity. I have no idea how to evaluate this card. I have no idea how to evaluate this card. It's a 3-2 haster that when you swing, all those auras come back, and there you go. And then you exile everything? Processing. My intuition tells me that a substantial percentage of the time, this brings back like one aura for an extra hurrah, maybe two, and you have to do stuff with it this turn. You also have to have played auras and then have had them die. I want to say two or three out of five limited. A lot of the times I think this is just going to be a three mana three two with haste, which is the main reason I'm giving it a three out of five. Three mana three two with haste can just be fine. Um, Like, so there's that red aura that when it enters the battlefield, it deals four damage, but I would have to play that, then lose the creature that that's attached to so that it goes to the graveyard, so that way when it comes back, I can do it. You know, there, there's just like a whole lot of stuff that has to happen. Three out of five. Constructed, zero out of five. I, I have no idea how an aura with Storm Heralds might actually look, especially given that all those auras then get exiled. If they went back to the battlefield, yeah, I mean, even with Constellation Triggers, I mean, you have to play a creature with an enchantment. Well, let's, let's imagine we're getting multiple enchantments. What's the minimum of multiple? Two. So if I have two creatures, or one creature with a pair of enchantments, or two creatures each with one enchantments, those then have to die and then I have to be able to play another creature with Constellation and then play Storm Herald. And then they'll all come back and the Constellation will trigger twice. I mean, there's a lot that needs to go on for like that to happen. So um, again, I think that a lot of the time this is a three mana, three, two with haste that occasionally can do something nifty. 
Um, yeah, so I, I'm giving three out of five. Storm's Wrath, two and two red. Storm's Wrath deals four damage to each creature and each planeswalker. <gasps> I love it. Four out of five constructed. Four out of five constructed, four out of five limited. I'm not giving you five out of five limited because it's each creature, so you know you don't want to fucking blow your shit up. Um, Jesus, constructed. I just want to make a red deck right now. This is a fantastic nuke your shit card. Hits planeswalkers, dude. It hits planeswalkers. <laughs> oh my gosh. There's a lot that it doesn't kill. There's a lot that it does. Mmm, Storm's Wrath. Yeah, fuck yeah. How does this work with Hexproof creatures? It goes right through Hexproof. Hexproof prevents targeting. This doesn't target anything. It just does it to all of them. And that's how we get around that. Storm's Wrath, yeah. Fuck yeah, love it. Getting wiggly just thinking about it. And the reason this is a 4 out of 5 constructed is it is double red. Red typically is not a control color, so you need to have some other things going on. We're going to try to make big red work. Don't think that we're not. Um, yeah, I'm very excited about that. Tectonic Giant, two and double red. Whenever Tectonic Giant attacks or becomes the target of a spell, an opponent controls, choose one. Deals three damage to each opponent. Okay. Exile the top two cards of your library. Choose one of them. Until the end of your next turn, you may play that card. whenever it attacks or becomes a target of a spell an opponent controls. Fuck. Huh. So, I think that this is quite strong and limited. I'd probably give it a 5 in limited because a 3-4 four for 4 is an acceptable stat line for me. It also, if I just attack, I can choose a card there and then play it till the end of my next turn, which means that it basically replaces itself. I mean, if there was a 3-4 four for 4 that was like scry 1, draw 1, I mean, that, that'd feel good, man. Um, and it's whenever it attacks or becomes a target of a spell so if my opponent doesn't have anything I can attack and it deals 3 so I think it's probably 4 or 5 in limited I would give this a 4 in constructed it's 4 mana in red which you typically would say is an expensive red card it, it's not going to do anything on the turn it's played it's very vulnerable to sweepers but then when it starts attacking then it can really begin to do some some pain. I'd probably give it double four out of fives, yeah. This is, this is a nice little card, man. Yeah, maybe maybe there is some sort of Naya Giants where you, like, are just ramping with your Giants, your Realm cloaked in, you're swinging and shit like this. Three, four is pretty good defensive style. Yeah, I like this card quite a bit. I'm going to give it four out of fives across the board. Thrill of Possibility, we already see this one in gameplay. It's one in a red. It's additional cost to cast a spell, discard a card, and draw through two cards. This is very popular in decks that want to fill up their graveyard because they're doing some sort of reanimator nonsense. In uh, Limited, it's a two out of five. It's the sort of card that you get out of your hand with a useless land and then try to draw into some two good stuff. Um, so, and in Constructed, I'd also still give it a two out of five. It's just so circumstantial because the thrill of possibility is a card, the thing you're discarding is a card, and then you're drawing two cards. So it's just turning the thrill and the other card into two different cards. So it's like, you know, it's okay. Also, we like reprints with different art styles. The Triumph of an Axe. Two and a red. For one, two, and three chapters of the Triumph of an Axe. Until end of turn, target creature gains trample and gets plus x plus o where x is the number of lore counters on the triumph of an axe all right target creature you control fights up to one target creature you don't control
this is a I think this is a very 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 nice limited card I'd give it a four out of five because um, the ability to start getting some trampler things to begin crushing through for some extra damage is something that a lot of red decks will peter out struggle to get through you know you can just chump block things and the trample and plus x plus o is very nice especially the plus three plus o and trample super great if you have like any flyer it's really great um target creature you control fights up to one target creature you don't control super delayed removal i'm kind of like eh. i'm mostly looking at the first three of those maybe this is three out of five and uh limited and zero out of five and constructed zero out of five and constructed because like dude i mean if you're red you want to start dealing some damage you want to start breaking through you don't want to just like get an extra one two or three with hopefully some creatures out you'd want this to just be a creature you know or if this card was just deal three damage to the enemy i feel like you'd be doing more than with this triumph of an axe so this is more or less lackluster as far as i'm concerned underworld breach one in a red enchantment each non-land card in your graveyard has escape escape cost is equal to the card's mana cost plus Exile three other cards from your graveyard. At the beginning of the unstep sacrifice underworld breach. Holy shit. I'm like immediately concerned for modern. Every non land card in your graveyard has escape, and the escape cost is equal to the card's mana cost plus egg. The escape cost, it's the same as the card's mana cost. Wow. Whoa. 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 The only situation in which you would do this in limited is if I were trying to get back, if I was trying to recur my ultra super solid amazing bomb, and this is a way to just let me recast my bomb from my graveyard with this uh, escape cost. Um, outside of that, this seems pretty garbage. One out of five in limited. What do I think about constructed? Probably not. There's not a lot of good ways to fill up your graveyard. And then also get enough mana so that you can then exile a bunch of cards and cast a bunch of stuff from your graveyard. Uh, so I'm going to say that this is 0 out of 5 and constructed. Underworld Fires. Okay. 1 in a red. Underworld Fires deals, deals 1 damage to each creature in each Planeswalker. If permanent dealt damage, this way would die this turn. Exile it instead. Ooh. Sideboard and constructed. Absolutely. Uh, you know, this is... I'd probably still give it a 1 out of 5 in Constructed because this is exceptional as a sideboard card against White Weenie. You know, Ty the Taker has uh, an effect on death. Hunted Witness has an effect on death. Loyal Pegasus, Fairy Guide Mother, these are all X1s. So yeah, very, very effective way to roast a swath of tokens. So this is, I think, at least a sideboard consideration. You'd never main deck this. In um, limited, I also too think it's like a two two out of five, because the just blowing up a bunch of X ones is fantastissimo, uh, but that just doesn't happen that often. Um, you know, again, dealing one damage is rarely a desirable trait in any format. Maybe maybe I don't know. <laughs> Put an asterisk relative to older formats. Underworld Anger Dog. One and a red. Underworld Anger Dog attacks each combat of Able. Oh. I don't even like this in limited. I'd give it like a one out of five in limited. I do not like an X1 swinging hard in limited. Um, so easy for it to trade in a garbage like fashion. The escape is four and three cards, so it's a four two. That's some upside. Um, maybe you actually are okay with it dying. I don't know. I'm still like one out of five, two out of five in it. Um, there's not a lot of good blockers. 
to shut this puppy down. So it'll probably trade. Yeah, it isn't the... I mean, constructed 0 out of 5 is just slow and weird and not that great. You know, I mean, would you rather have this or a runaway steam kit? You know what I'm saying? Wrap in Flames. 3 in a red. Wrap in Flames deals 1 damage to each of up to 3 target creatures. Those creatures can't block this turn. It's Cosmotronic Wave in Theros. Sir. Um... A 23rd card in Limited. Zero out of five in Constructed, it doesn't matter. Although, I really should run Cosmotronic Wave once in my life in a Constructed deck. And I should be like, surprise! <laughs> oh my god. That would be so funny to run that in like a Mono Red or a Boros. Or a Rakdos. <clears throat> oh, ooh, oh. Oh. Oh, oh. It's time to get green. Yes, we're closing out on what is currently my favorite color. Arasta of the Endless Web. Two and a pair of greenies. Reach. A 3-5, of course. 3-5 Reach Spider for four. Already very good and limited. Very, very good. Whenever an opponent casts an instant or sorcery spell create a 1-2 green spider creature token with reach yeah I mean this is just very good in limited like 5 out of 5 in limited this is really good in limited man this is really good it's such a strong defensive card a 3-5 there's a lot of x3s not a lot of things that can deal 5 damage Oh, man. Um, this is very, very strong. I call it like a 4.8 out of 5. Arasta will rarely ever end the game because 3-5 is also not a stat line that can just close games out. 3-5 is a big threat, but um, it's the endless 1-2s that will slowly accumulate. Notice that it's an instant or sorcery, not to be confused with something being cast at instant speed, flash creatures, flash enchantments. Won't proc this at all. In constructed, I'm going to give it a 1 out of 5. 3 5 is not an intimidating stat line. Reach is not particularly relevant because it's not like we're getting overrun with flyers and there needs to be good answers. <clears throat> we have things like the Questing Beast, which is 2 and a pair of green for a 4 4 with all keywords ever created. <laughs> Uh, so, you know, I'm going to go with the Questing Beast and just get everything and just continue to smush, smush, smash. Yeah, so, I, I mean, one out of five, because I'm sure there's going to be some way to kind of, like, fiddle with this thing. You can imagine, like, a control deck, you play a Rasta, and it's trying to draw and do stuff, and it's growing out. But, I mean, this is not the way that you want to deal with a control deck. A lot of the ways that you want to deal with control deck is things that get around sweepers, like Gideon. The Planeswalker can also uh, uh, do something like an Adanto Vanguard, try to go before the three mana counters start kicking in. But this is, it would be a weird one. Um, this uh, one out of five, because maybe it's acceptable as a sideboard card in some matchups. Eh. The card's so tight, though. I love this card. The Binding of the Titans. One in a green. The first is each player puts the top three cards of their library into their graveyard. Mm -hmm. Second was exile up to two target cards from graveyards. For each creature exile this way you gain a life. Okay. Return target creature or land card from your graveyard to your hand. One out of five constructed, zero out of five. One out of five limited, zero out of five constructed. I say one out of five limited because in three turns you can return your bomb back to your hand. Huh? So that is a reason to run this type of card. I mean, honestly, the bombs in this set are sufficiently bombastic. They're sufficiently bombful that, like, if you played one and it died... And then you played this and returned it. 
you can like win a game with just a single unbelievable card. So that's why I call it a one out of five in limited because I can see the reason. Um, constructed, my God, if this is in a deck. Mm, 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 mm. That's what I think. Chain web, Arachnir. I'm an Arachnir. I'm not an Arachnid. I'm an Arachnir. One green reach. Jesus, look at the amount of text on this one mana bad boy. When Chain Web Arachnir enters the battlefield, it deals damage equal to its power to target creature with flying and opponent controls. Ah! Chain Web Arachnir! You can escape for a, a buttload, and it comes out with three plus one plus one counters on it. Oh! Zingo Dingo. Reckner. Reckner. Now, in Constructed, we don't like this card in Constructed, not even a little bit. It's a 1-2 reach spider that flaccidly attempts to noodle some damage onto the uh, opponent. Gets stopped by everything. Doesn't have Death Touch. No good. Can we bring it back and do something good with it later on in Constructed? No. Limited. A big four. A big fat frickin' four. Often having an answer to flyers is pretty significant, especially with all the flyers we've been seeing in the set. And the ability to zap one when you play the chain web arachnur, and then when it dies, you can spend five, and do you get a four five? That's not just a four five with Reach Spider is is really threatening. Very, very, very threatening. But I, I just don't see this being that good. I mean, what about against White Weenie? I mean, you play a 1 2 and you pick something off, and then there's a billion more flyers. And then you have to wait till turn 5 and then, like, hope that this is dies so you can, like, bring it back. And then you have a 4 5 with Reach, you know. It's. It's. Eh. Destiny Spinna. All right, we got our 1 and a green enchantment creature. All right, two, three. Creature and enchantment spells you control can't be countered. Whoa. For four mana, target land you control becomes an XX elemental creature with trample and haste until end of turn where X is the number of enchantments you control. It's still a land. Whoa. Whoa. Okay. All right. In limited, there's often not that many counter spells. So, uh, this being a 2 3 for 2, very nice. The ability to start making land into creatures when there's a lot of enchantments out, when there are enchantment creatures in the set, very nice. This is a 4 out of 5 in limited. I mean, even just a 2-3 two, for 2, I'd be getting really excited about. But the fact that this is an enchantment creature with Prox Constellations, and then you have other enchantments where things are starting to go all good, this feels really nice. This, in Constructed, I would call a 3 out of 5. I genuinely, genuinely think that this has some real merit uh, in Constructed. 3 out of 5, because, dude, creature and enchantment spells you control can't be countered. How much mana is the Destiny Spinner? 2. What is the typical starting cost for counters? Three. That's pretty nice. There, there was um, Rhythm of the Wild that was, you know, your creatures can't be countered, but it was three mana, so it was just a little bit slow. Um, so I think that th there, there's, there's. Three and two mana is such a huge difference when it comes to counter spells. So I really think the Destiny Spinner is probably going to show up three out of five. That's what I'm going to say. Three out of five. Dryad of the Elysian Grove. Two and a green. This is how I looked when I was in that sauna cooking. That's me trying to unwind, but I can't. I have way too much anxiety. Two and a green, enchantment creature, nymph. Nice. You may play an additional land on each of your turns. Damn. Lands you control are every basic land type in addition to their other types.
Gross. Um, hmm. Okay, so let's get this straight. You may play an additional land on each of your turns. This guy's like, what you looking at, our Boreal Grazer? It's getting tough, man. He's just crushing our Boreal Grazer. That's Grazer blood all over his body. Um, lands you control are every basic land type in addition to their other types, which means that if I, put, if I play something fancy, like a Sun Petal Grove, which I guess has been rotated out, like a Temple Garden, it's also a mountain and a swamp and a plains and a forest and an island. So it can tap for any color. So this is kind of like a chromatic lantern, kinda. It's a 2 4. So this also turns Nyssa on to every single thing. Because normally it's like forests you control tap for an additional green. Well now all of a sudden my steam vents is also a forest. So when I tap it for a red it also generates a green. Okay, let's start with Limited. It's a 3-mana 2-4 that's an enchantment creature. That, right away, makes it pretty solid. You can also play an extra land. Occasionally is relevant. Normally, rampers on turn 1 or 2 are more impactful than something that ramps on turn 3, but this is still fine. Uh, and, and the multicolor aspect is generally not that relevant in Limited, because you're probably only going to get one of these, you know. So this is a reliable 2-4 that can proc Constellation. I'd give it a 3 out of 5, given all the other upside in Limited. I think this is a fine card. Now, in Constructed, I am really struggling to evaluate this card. Um, yeah, I'm, re I'm really struggling with that. I think I'd give it 3 out of 5. The most notable... Hooray situation that I'm, I'd am i be rooting for for this would be like, I play the Dryad, play an additional land, and then I smash down Anissa. I'm going to play an additional land on each of your turns. There's other formats where, like the Eternal formats, like I think that you could do some bullshit stuff with this. There's so many cards that have been banned that are just like, you can play extra lands, and they just completely warped everything. Um, I'll be honest, I am struggling to really wrap my head around like a concrete bone crushing situation for Dryad of the Elysian Grove. Because here's the thing. Lands you control are every basic land type in addition to their other types. Let's look at this one first. Let's look at this one first. There have been decks with Chromatic Lantern, such as the uh, Chromatic Black deck uh, made by um, Ali Aldrazi. That deck had pretty much all black cards and then a Chromatic Lantern, which allowed all of the lands to generate whatever mana they wanted. And then it had, you know, like a like a nib mizzet, just something here and there. Um, so if you're doing something like a Dryad of the Elysian Grove, where you're like chromatic green, where you have a whole bunch of green, like you're almost mono green, but then you also include a couple of really powerful, like five color cards or something like this. Okay. Th there's like something there, you know? But we didn't see Chromatic Black, like, annihilate, you know? We didn't see it just be this car. It was like, so fucking good. We didn't see those Chromatic Lantern decks just, like, break in the meta. They were a bit lower. So if, if you have, like, a Dryad of the Elysian Grove, and I guess you could also run Chromatic Lanterns. Or have those been rotated out? I don't know. This is not a card I think about. 
Um, do lands you control are every base clan type in addition to their other types? I think a danger that people will fall into is they will run a deck that is five colors hard, and then they will struggle to get all the different colors that they need to do anything on a given turn unless they draw the Dryad of the Elysian Grove. That can happen. So when I try to think about you may play an additional land on each of your turns, I've done a lot of ramp decks in my life. And when you can play an additional land on your turns, the biggest thing you deal with is your hand just emptying out really fast. You have to be extremely careful to hell, not even run too many arboreal grazers. Like a lot of decks run like a pair of arboreal grazers because like it's so easy to not be able to replace cards in your hand. This is why something like um, Growth Spiral feels nice because you draw a card and then you can play an extra land. You can draw a card and you can play an extra land. So with this kind of card, I, I historically there's been some really nice, awesome shit that people can do when they can play additional lands. But I still struggle to see the real concrete archetype around this. So I'm going to say three out of five in constructed because I feel like there's something there, but I can't envision it. Other than something really basic, like turn three Dryad, turn four Nyssa. But I have a goose in a paradise druid to introduce me to turn three Nyssa already. So the first I row in games. Two and a green. Create a one one white human soldier creature token. Put three plus one plus one counters on target creature you control. If you control a creature with power four or greater, draw two cards, create a gold token. This feels quite nice in limited. I'm gonna call this a four in limited because I think that you're often gonna be able to get the, if you control a creature with power four or greater, draw two cards because one, this creates a four four, so they'll have to remove it. Two, you're green, so you're probably gonna have some other creatures with power four or greater. So then you can draw two cards, which is nice. And creating a gold token, gold is sacrifice this artifact, generate one mana of any old color. So I'd give this four out of five in limited because it just seems solid. We get a big creature, sometimes you get to draw. Um, worst case scenario is you play this, you get a 4-4 that gets blown up, and then you get some mana later. So this is pretty solid. Constructed, I have a really difficult time seeing this ever being good and constructed because shit dies too much. Things die! You must be confronted with death when you play constructed. Gift of strength. Oh my god. Aardvark tabulous. One and a green. Dark creature gets plus three, plus three, and gains a reach until end of turn. It's fine. It's a combat trick. Never going to see constructed play. Zero out of five there. But limited, you know, you, you pick up one of these. You run, a com you run a combat trick here and there. It's a cat bat thing with no hair. Hydra's Growth, two and a green. Enchant creature. When Hydra's Growth enters the battlefield, put a plus one, plus one counter on enchanted creature. Oh. At the beginning of your upkeep, double the number of plus one, plus one counters on Enchanted Creature. Okay. Man. Oh, God. Oh, dude, dude. Speak in my language, Metal Thulu. Double is an exciting word. Double, double. Not 10% more double 2x every single upkeep this is an example of the type of aura that starts to pique your interest but you still kind of have a uh, hydra's growth i'm going to call a three out of five in limited three out of five in limited for the following simple reason it's an enchantment that when you cast it on one of your creatures they can just kill the creature and it's gone and that's that and now you have two for one to yourself. I think that if you got this, waited a little bit of time to your opponent starting to run out of cards, then you played Hydra's Growth. This is a win condition in and of itself, but it's a fragile win condition because you are one removal spell away from getting this killed. And again, if it's like a 3-3, three, three, the order would be it becomes a 4-4 four, four, and then a 5-5 five, five, and then a, uh, let's see. Yeah, and then a 7-7. Seven, seven. So, like, 
it takes three turns to actually get to the bigness. <sighs> so, I mean, I guess, like, e e even personally, I want to say something like, if it's a 3-3 three, three and it gets a plus one, plus one counter on it, now it's a 4-4, four, four, and it ha doubles the number of plus one, plus one counters on it, so now it has two, so it would be a 5-5, uh, five, five. and those would get doubled again, so it would be a 7. Uh, either way. I even feel so uncomfortable when I see this, because I'm just like, dude, I just don't know. I am probably going to draft this and be like, ooh, this is a good time for this, and then I'm going to just, it's going to die, and I'm going to die inside. Constructed 0 out of 5. It's just not... You know, it's not great. Oh, Simic Ascendancy memes? Ooh, there you go, Ang8811. And then you, like, hexproof the shit. Oh, primo. Yeah, it's, this doesn't seem that great. Hyrax Tower Scout. Two and a green. When Hyrax Tower Scout enters the battlefield, untap target creature. It's a 3-3 three, three for 3. Completely fine, on-curve, limited card. Constructed. Zero out of five. Your vote comes out as a 4-4. Four, four. This comes out as a 3-3. Three, three. So, you know... Elysian Karyatid Elysian Karyatid something like that Karyatid <laughs> one in green add one mana of any color if you control a creature with power four or greater add two mana of any one color instead ooh it's a plant well that was a funny little noise yeah let me, let me scratch your chin this cat just wants her chin rubbed forever um, a two mana ramper. It can get bigger. It's a very cute little tree, I will say. I mean, you know. We already have enough rampers. Yeah, I don't know. It's It seems fine. It's fine. It's a fine card. It's fine. Constructed to... Zero out of five. No, constructed one out of five. Limited two out of five. It's eh. It's eh. It's eh. I mean, eh. I mean, eh. I guess it's a chump or some shit. Like, I don't know, man. Inspire. Aw. Oh. Three and a uh, green. Prevent all combat damage that would be dealt this turn, except combat damage that would be dealt by enchanted creatures and enchantment creatures. Also, we're worried this is bad, so we're going to put a scry two on it. I like that identification. Um, it's a it's a pricey fog, and fog is traditionally something that I hate so much. God, I hate fog effects. Um, this is more or less irrelevant in uh, limited because limited you want things that are creatures that affect the board spells that affect the board like removal things like this so this is like eh, not really doing that it's also not going to be able to deal with the glut of enchantment and enchanted creatures in constructed oh god fogs always find a way i'm going to say two out of five in constructed because they always find a way to be in some bullshit nonsense obnoxious delay forever then combo you out in one turn deck always so i think it'll have some merit there Cloth this design. Five in a green. Whoa. Creatures you control get plus X, plus X until end of turn where X is your devotion to green. Definitely not. Is there a mono green deck where this would be good? No, because it's six. A mono green constructed deck that's including this doesn't make sense because mono green is typically a more aggressive beat you down fast and so if you if you played some cloths of the divine i mean hell maybe maybe i have a mono green great henge deck and this is the way to give everything plus billion plus billion <laughs> um i don't know I, i'd probably give it like a zero out of five for constructed it's hard for me to see that but this is gonna fall into the cosmetronic wave classification of Maybe you'll include one of these if you are a greener deck and you're looking for a way to just try to polish off the enemy. I mean, even if you have Devotion just being three, giving everything plus three, plus three is pretty, pretty great.
So I can see it being like two out of five in limited. It's a uh, it's twenty third card for sure. Lose them Chimera, two and a green. It's a four one. That's a weird stat line. It escapes with a plus one plus one counter on it, so it's a five two. In constructed. Zero out of five. A lot of these escape cards just seem far too slow for constructed. Four limited. It may, is this maybe a three out of five? Because nothing about this excites me, but then I have knowledge of all these other things that say if you have power four or greater, then do some shit. Four is also a beating. Um, yeah, that is some pretty sweet art. I will, I will agree. A 4-1 and a 5-2 is weird. It's just, it's just weird. The escape cost doesn't feel as prohibitive as some of the other ones. But, um... May, uh, my intuition says 1 out of 5 for limited, but maybe this is a 3 out of 5? I don't know. I don't know. Houndy says, I would not have had the energy to card view for this long. Damn right. I am a machine, man. Let me tell you, I'm going to reward myself later tonight. No, nah, tomorrow night going to the sauna just cooking maybe after this i'll go to the apartment complex's hot tub and just bubble in there Ooh! all right this is the mantle of the wolf the wolf oh yeah it's three and a green enchant creature it gets plus four plus four wow when mantle of the wolf is put into a graveyard from the battlefield create two 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 green wolf creature tokens this is historically the way that I have seen um, auras look good, is when this aura goes to the graveyard, do something. There was, um, what was that mechanic called? There was a mechanic that used to be like a creature you could cast onto another creature as a buff, and then when the original creature died, the enchantment would turn into a creature, like consistently. Bestow. Ah. Ah. <laughs> ah. So this 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 card is fantastic. This is a 5 out of 5 limited card. This runs a bit of a danger in constructed when you try to cast the mantle of the wolf on a creature and they kill it before the enchantment hits the creature and this just dwindles to the graveyard. But this really, really sings to me in Constructed. Like, I would love to be able to just have a huge creature beating down. My opponent kills it, and now if they're a creature deck and they've killed it, I'm going wide with smaller things. If they're a sweeper. I have a pair of 2-2 green wolves. I mean, this is, this is a neat card. Um, I think I'm, I'm going to call it a 2 out of 5 Constructed because I think there's something juicy there. Um... I don't think it's going to be any sort of standard card you're going to see a lot. I, I don't think, but... Um, Phil on Twitch says, even if it fizzles, you get the wolves. It says, when the mantle of wolf is put into a graveyard from the battlefield, create two uh, of those, which means that if it's a spell and the target gets removed, the spell fizzles, so it never entered the battlefield in the first place. Mantle of the wolf can only be a... Um, uh, can only be on the battlefield when it's attached to a creature. And that, that is kind of my worry when it comes to Constructed. So, mm. did I skip one? Yeah, I knew I skipped one. Moss Viper, a 1-1 one, one with Death Touch. There, This has historically been a really reliable card in Limited. You're never over the moon for it, but it's a solid three out of five Limited. You're just like, oh, okay, cool, I'll play this, and you can never attack with your big scary things unless you want them to die. And this is also a great removal eater, because you're just like, oh, God, I gotta get rid of this thing so I can start swinging. Excuse me. That's what exhaustion looks like. I, my brain just disappeared, man. Constructed, zero out of five. There we go, I'm back in my element. Mystic Repeal, one green. Put target enchantment on the bottom of its owner's library. 
Oh! Oh, my. There has been a hunger for more ways to deal with enchantments that are bullshit because fuck Fires of Invention and all those cat decks. So this is one of these four out of five constructed given the current meta and probably with the introduction of additional enchantment type things such as the gods. Gods are enchantment creatures. Get that god to the bottom of the library. God. Because remember, an enchantment creature is also an enchantment. Uh, I think that this Theros Beyond Death has done a really good job making sure each color has an interesting way to deal with the gods, you know. We have the exile target creature type effects, exile target enchantment type effects, each player sacrifices a creature type effects, put target enchantment on the bottom, it's very nice. In limited, I also think this is going to wind up being a 4 out of 5, maybe even a 5 out of 5, because, oh, you're like, how does this hurt cats? Trail of Crumbs is an enchantment that really sucks a lot of ass. Uh, Mystic Repeal is going to have so many targets in limited. It's going to have gods, it's going to have enchantment creatures, it's going to have auras. Uh, I mean, I think that this is going to turn out to just be a 1 mana green instant speed removal. I mean, this is this is amazing. So I, I'd actually say this is a 5 out of 5 in this limited format. Very different from a 5 out of 5 limited card. This is 5 out of 5 limited. Why did green get this? Green uh, is historically the strongest anti-magic color. So things like artifacts and enchantments tend to be most hated upon by green. Secondarily, white. Um, so this is a, a different way to just get your enchantments out. Nessian Boar, or Nessian Boar. Three and a pair of greenies for a 10-6 boar. All creatures able to block Nessian Boar do so. Whenever Nessian Boar becomes blocked by a creature, that creature's controller draws a card. Oh, thank God. Okay. Huh. Um, okay, so j just so you know, if if my opponent has three creatures and I swing with the Nessian Boar, uh, Nessian Boar has become blocked by a creature, has become blocked by a creature, has become blocked by a creature. That creature's controller draws a card, so they draw, draw, draw for each of them. Because each of those creature blocking is an event of, it's become blocked by a creature. So, um... Yeah, let me point out one of the exceptional circumstances for this in Limited. This is a very, very good way to finish off an opponent and to force trades. So first of all, let me do the force trades example. If you're in Limited and your opponent has like a 5-5 five, five, or like a flyer or some shit like that, you can attack with the boar and guaranteed kill this thing, and then when they play another creature, you attack with an Nessian board, guaranteed kills this thing. If your opponent doesn't have creatures on the board, this Nessian board can just immediately end the end the damn game, just by to clear things out. Also, if there's a clogged board, I have a bunch of junk, you have a bunch of junk, and I have a Nessian board, I can attack with a Nessian board and everything else, and they have to block the Nessian board, and then I just kill with the rest of everything. Um, I still think this is good enough. I'd give it four out of five in limited. In constructed, dude, I I, I don't even know. I have no clue. Ten six. Jesus. I have no idea. This could be a zero out of five. This could be a four out of five. I think this I think we're gonna have a question mark out of five. Yeah, like fling. Fling is one that comes to mind. Embercleave, dude? I mean, just imagine an Embercleave. It's too expensive. <laughs> Watch me. That black enchantment? Yeah, if you play that and then play the Nessian Boar. Oh! <gasps> 
What was its name? What was its name? What was the name of it? This! Underworld Dreams! Do you remember the Clackbridge Troll? <gasps> we could we could do like Mono Black with a Clackbridge Troll. Just crack his fucking head open. Yes! Mmm! Clackbridge Troll! Oh my god. God, did I, did I, what's the last one? Oh my God, I was so close to being able to nail it. Oh, I was so close. Anyways, Neshian Boar's stat line reminded me of the Clackbridge Troll. And I'm just thinking, oh my God, a mono black deck with like Clackbridge and it's gonna be so good. Oh my fucking God. Oh my God. Uh, yeah, so Neshian Boar gave four out of five in limited. I, I have no idea even remotely how to evaluate this. In construct, I have no clue. There's like a red deck where you play the nesting board and you just like fling it or ember cleave it. Maybe there's a mono green deck where you've built up enough of a board without trample, bash with the nesting boar, and break through with a bunch of other damage. Like mono green really wants more tramples for a lot of its non trample creatures. I don't, oh, I don't know. What if you attack with two? Don't know. Nesting horn beetle. At the beginning of combat on your turn, if you control another creature with power 4 or greater, put a plus 1, plus 1 counter on Nessian Horn Beetle. 4 out of 5 limited. Very, very good. Gets big, keeps getting big, keeps winning. There you go. Love it, love it, love it. Good and constructed. I'm not actually sure. If you had pelt collectors, like typically a lot of mono green decks have some ramping component to it. Like I have a land or elf and I'm gonna go to a turn two steel leaf champion or some shit like that. But like if you have a pelt collector into Nessie and Horn Beetle into Yorvo, well now all of a sudden you are growing your pelt collector, you're growing your Nessie and Horn Beetle, which no gets larger on combat on combat um you can also do something like play a uh gruel spellbreaker so maybe a mono green splashing red i think this is a four out of five and limited and maybe a two out of five and constructed for that reason I, I have some ideas in there so uh and howdy says i think green already has too many good cards in the what would you take out for this guy all the rampers like there's a paradise druids have made their way into a lot of mono green constructions even maybe something like a uh, Growth Chamber Guardian. Maybe you do keep the Growth Chamber Guardians in. Maybe those are your other two drops because those can adapt to become four fours and then this is growing all by itself. Because you don't have to keep having new creatures. You can just have the existing creatures and just Then if it gets to four four, it makes itself grow. Uh, Nessian Wanderer, one and a green. Oh, look, that's me when I'm finally done with this card review and I have permission to eat. It's a Seder Scout. It's a 1-3. Constellation. Whenever an enchantment enters the battlefield under your control, look at the top three cards of your library. You may reveal a land card from among them and put the card into your hand. Put the rest on the bottom of your library in a random order. Very, very nice limited card. Four out of five. Undeniably. Um, there are enough enchantment creatures, enough ways to proc Constellation that we've been talking about all day long that this is just going to start giving you land into your decks. Or into your hand. Giving you land, you keep playing him. Giving you land, gonna keep playing him. Uh, so, a one three for two is a completely solid stat line against a lot of the two ones and two twos and two threes that come out on turns two and three. Nessian Wander is a primo blocker. It's great. Nexus Wardens, ah, two and a green. Seder Archer, reach. Whenever an enchantment enters the battlefield under your control, you gain two life. Limited AF. I didn't evaluate this for constructed. It's zero out of five. Are you surprised? This is a zero out of five in constructed card. <laughs> in limited, it's like, eh. Bleh. 
it's the mediocreest one out of five. You might you might put in some Nexus Wardens like at the very very end. You know maybe circumstantially maybe in a best of three limited. If your opponent has a whole bunch of little tiny flapping peckers, you put in one of these and just peck them down out of the sky while healing on up going puzza. But outside, that's the wrong button. But outside of that, you know it's not that great. Nylee, a keen eyed three and a green, ah, indestructible. As long as your devotion to green is less than five, Nylee isn't a creature, and she's a five-six when she is. Creature spells you cast cost one less to cast. Well, I gotta give this a five in constructed. I gotta give it a five in constructed. I'm gonna gotta do it. No, I mean it's actually probably a four out of five in both constructed and limited. Um, mono green can probably get Nylia keen eyed into Creature Town. She also gives Creature Town a good opportunity to continue to refill the hand. So actually probably five out of five in <sighs> both. Sorry. Yeah. I don't know why I didn't see this loop that like you play her and then you use her three mana ability to start putting more creatures into your hand that you can then place onto the battlefield. Wow. I'm going to be building the shit out of some mono green aggro. My Leah. Oh my God. Yeah. Yeah. I think this is five out of five. Play this in limited. I mean, there's already such slow the game down cards like Nexus Wardens, slow the game down cards like Nesh and Wanderer, slow the game down cards like Moss Viper in green. There's enough of these that I feel like Nylia will be able to build up some time. God, it's gonna be so good. Oh my God, it's fucking so sick. Yes! Nylia's four runner. Four and a green trample. Other creatures you control have trample. Oh shit. Yeah. Yeah. Trample is a very important keyword. Very important keyword. Uh, like super unfrickin' believably important keyword. A 5 3 for 5 feels a little shitty, but giving everyone else trample is very nice for finishing stuff off. This is even nice to play Nylia's Forerunner, and then you have some other creature that you're actually attacking with that gets the trample, such as the Neshian Boar. So Nylia's Forerunner, um, I'm on the verge of saying four out of five, but this is really a three out of five in limited. In constructed, zero out of five. Never ever would I ever do it. Nylia's Huntmaster, three and a green. It's a Centaur Shaman, a four, three, which I just hate this stat line. When Nylia's Huntmaster enters the battlefield, target creature you control gets plus X plus O until end of turn where X is your devotion to green. So at the very least, plus one, plus O. Um, mediocre, two out of five. Very mediocre card. It's fine. It's like your curve filling, pack filling, nonsense filling, whatever, shrug fulfilling. It's fine. It's a little pricey and a little dicey without doing very much. Mm. So, you know, it does have four power, which has some synergy and some efficiency. But I don't know. I just, that's maybe, it's, 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 it's what, it's fucking whatever. Do you understand me? It's fucking whatever. Zero out of five constructed. Nylia's intervention. These intervention cycles are so good. X and a pair of green. Choose one. Search your library for up to X land cards. Reveal them and put them into your hand. Then shuffle your library. Nylia's intervention deals twice X damage to each creature with flying. Okay. Okay. Not good in limited. One out of five. Two out of five in limited, maybe. If you have any flyers on the enemy side... They're gone. Don't even worry about them. Great in best of three sideboarding.
if you were named Sean Plot, you went by the moniker Day9, and you'd been known to play a lot of ramp cards. Maybe Nylia's intervention is like a kind of cool way to get like a lot um, of land cards out. Maybe? I don't freaking know. You know, you play some Escape from the Wilds. You play some naked satyrs that are making you play an extra land every turn. Like, I don't know. But paying four to put two forests in the hand feels garbage. Paying five to put three mana in the hand feels eh. So I'd give this constructed one out of five. I'd give this limited one out of five, two out of five. Mm. Nyx Herald, an enchantment creature, centaur shaman. Two and a green for a two three at the beginning of combat on your turn. Target enchanted creature or enchantment creature you control gets plus one plus one against trample until end of turn. This is a guaranteed three four for three with trample. Very solid. Four out of five. I love thick, sick creatures. The one downside that Nyx Herald has is when it's not buffed. It's a 2-3, so it just dies to 3. Uh, spells that deal 3 damage, so. Uh, I give it 4 out of 5 limited. Uh, 0 out of 5 constructed. It's just a slow... I mean, we're talking about giant creatures with devotion, all sorts of shit in green. Green is pretty yoked up right now, man. Yay. Nyx Bloom Ancient. Four and a green and a green and a green. It's a 5-5 five, five with Trample. If you tap a permanent for mana, it produces three times as much of that mana. Yay. Yay. My favorite casting cost is X. Hmm. X. Three times as much. Tap a Lotus Field. It's going to make you nine mana. Lotus Field for nine is pretty funny. Or if you're someone like Day Nine that's just flooded the board with like 12 different mana sources because I run four Escape from the Wilds. Why not let X equal Abelian? Wow, this isn't a legendary. We can get two Nyx Bloom Ancients out. Wow. Wow. Finale of glory indeed. Nyx Born Col Oh, I'm sorry. This is a uh, limited... Three out of five limited. It's seven mana for a five five. It's not a flyer. You typically are not going to be doing anything for X and Limited. So this is like a 3 out of 5. If you get there, you know, whatever. I'd almost prefer this Nyxborn Colossus. 6 mana, 6, 7. Just your usual 3 out of 5. Solid at the high end because it's pricey, 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 pricey. Constructed 0 out of 5. Vanilla creatures tend not to live in Constructed. Omen of the Hunt. Ooh. Flash. When Omen of the Hunt enters the battlefield, you may search your library for a basic land card. Put onto the battlefield tapped. Then shuffle your library. Sacrifice only a hunt scry too. I love cards like this. It's a ramp out of ten. In limited, I, I I typically don't find these types of things to be super impactful. It's like spend three mana to get another land out there. You're gonna scry. So in limited, I always feel like these are one or two out of fives there. Uh in constructed, I, I still don't know. I'd still probably say one out of five in constructed. I mean, you do have some pretty good ramp in the form of the um, Beanstalk Giants. Now we have the Dryad. Beanstalk Giant feels really good because it 
combos with your Lucky Clover, but I, I am quite a fan of things that search your library for a basic land and put it out as opposed to a creature that taps for extra mana because land is a lot more permanent of a card. There's It's a lot more difficult to remove a land from there. Um, this also puts it on the battlefield tapped. Beanstalk Giant is untapped. Little things. Ferris Band Brawler. Four and, and double green for a four four. When it enters the battlefield, it fights up to one target creature you don't control. Five out of five in limited. I love this kind of card in limited. Four four that fights. Five. Constructed quality, zero. I think I should reserve four for your basic removals and for solid cards and then five for bombs because I'm not giving anything a four. <laughs> I'm not giving a thing a four. Oh, Plummet. Ah, I love this card. This card's great. I'm always happy to see Plummet replant, reprint it every time. Now, this is a little bit of just lore spection happening. Look at that arrow going through the heart of the dragon. Look at that sort of blue glow. And then look at this arrow that Nylia Keen-Eyed is firing. Isn't that sick? It's that attention to detail that's just so, so cool. Nylia Keen-Eyed shot that arrow that caused the dragon to plummet. So good. So good. Mm. Relentless Pursuit, two and a green for a sorcery. Reveal the top four cards of your library. Put a creature card and or a land from among them into your hand. Put the rest in the graveyard. Um, Very mediocre. One out of five, two out of five. Not great. Not really great. Because you're basically saying, I want this to hopefully turn into a creature. The ideal is that you get a land and a creature, but if you put like spell like an instant in there it's eh this is once upon a time except this actually costs mana <laughs> ha 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 no ha 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 um i feel like i would rather just have a creature you know what i mean one out of five limited therefore zero out of five constructed renata called to the hunt oh my god she has such 70s sci-fi's book cover energy look at that renata call it to the hunt two and a pair of green renata's power is equal to your devotion to green Ooh, each other creature you control enters the battlefield with an additional plus one plus one counter on it so she's a two three for four she's very slow i would give her a four out of five in uh, limited due to the fact give her a four out of five in limited due to the fact that limited tends to be a little slower she could build up some momentum and she herself could start to get big but she'll you know at best she'd be like a six three which is not that great um a four four drops are four drops are kind of expensive compare this to the first green card we saw that was two and two green that was a three five with reach that's generating creature tokens every time an instant or sorcery is cast. Renata seems to be a little slow. I, maybe I'd just give her a three out of five for limited. She has obvious edge as time goes on, but I don't know. Now, constructed. You flipping upside down? Yeah. Constructed. Each other creature enters the battlefield with an additional plus one, plus one counter on it. Immediately your instinct is like, march of the multitudes, bring, make them all two twos. It's easier to do something like march of the multitudes and then just like give them a buff elsewhere as opposed to trying to hope this creature is alive and then have the, the swarm comes down. Something like march of the multitudes at end step when your opponent is tapped out and then on your turn you play unbreakable formation, give them all plus two, plus one, plus one. That's the sort of way that I want to get counters on my creatures, not the reverse. So I would give this like a one or zero out of five, probably zero out of five in constructed. But yeah, three out of five limited. Seems okay, seems okay, seems okay. I guess it is just an uncommon, so it makes a little bit of sense. Return to nature. Kill an artifact, kill an enchantment, or exile target card from a graveyard. Good to see this getting reprinted. Um, 
this is a circumstantial out of five. You guys know when this is useful. Oh no, there's so many good enchantment creatures. I gotta kill it. <sighs> it's like whatever. It's very whatever. It's whatever out of five. <laughs> My stamina's running out. Satession Champion. Two and a green. Whenever an enchantment enters the battlefield under your control, put a plus one plus one counter on Satession Champion and draw a card. Oh. Baby, baby, baby. Oh, yeah. All right. Holy shit. Now, typically what we would say is, hey, if you play this and it dies, you know, you didn't get any upside out of it. Um, but if you get any upside out of it, this is insane. This is insane. There's so many enchantment creatures. Satession Champion, by herself, is going to start to become like a 6-8, you know. It's like so unbelievably freaking good. Um, and you're drawing cards. I mean, holy guacamole. What do I... Th so this is 5 out of 5 in limited, like very obviously. But what do we think about it in constructed? Probably give it a 2 out of 5 in Constructed. Because here's the thing. It has a very powerful effect, even for Constructed. But it's whenever an enchantment enters the battlefield. I have not seen a lot of enchantment creatures today that have made me go, holy shit, I can't wait to play all these enchantment creatures. I haven't seen a lot of those. There are some historical um, enchantments. You know, maybe some even one mana enchantments that you can cast on this. Um, it might be reasonable. I'll contrast this with a Risen Reef, which on the turn it's played, draws a card or ramps a land. Station Champion doesn't do anything on the turn she's played. She's just a 1-3. Risen Reef procs on Elementals. Elementals were already doing stuff. You have the uh, Leafkin Druid, which generates mana. You have the um, Cavalier of Thorns, which is just a fucking amazing card anyways. And you have other Risen Reefs, which proc on each other. So when I see Satesh and Champion... I don't see enchantment creatures that I'm I'm like, oh my god, rush to construct it with this sick enchantment creature. This doesn't proc on itself. And there has to be other enchantments that need to be sick as this. Like, I don't know. I, I really think this is maybe even in, increasingly a one out of five in constructed. It like I have to give it a non-zero amount in constructed because, dude, it has a powerful effect. But yeah, I, I just don't think this one's going to see constructed play. I'm going to stretch my back a sec. Ah, oh, so good. All right. Station Petitioner. One and a pair of greenies. When Station Petitioner enters the battlefield, gain life equal to your devotion to green for a 2-2. Two -two. This is totally a mediocre limited card. Two out of five. Mediocre limited card. Two out of five. Uh, do I think it's constructed playable? No, no, I'd give it also two out of five. I mean, two out of five limited, maybe a one out of five constructed. I, 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 I want to give it a zero out of five constructed, but I can imagine some situation where I'm playing a mono green deck and I'm against an aggro deck that just keeps going under and I just bam, slam down some life gain. That's it. That's it. Satesh and Skirmisher. And I assume it's Satesh Shen. When I see double S's, I want to go Sha. Maybe it is Satesan, Setesan, or Setesan. I don't know how to pronounce nothing here, man. 
Station Skirmisher, one green for 2 1. Constellation, whenever an enchantment enters the battlefield under your control, Station Skirmisher gets plus one, plus one, plus one till end of turn. Um, I, two out of five, three out of. It's, it's just a, it's a 2 1 for two, that's it. Occasionally it becomes a 3 2, occasionally, and a 3 2 is not something to be fist pumping about. It's just fine. Set us on training. One and a green. Enchanted creature you control. When it enters the battlefield, draw a card. Nice. Enchanted creature has plus one, plus zero, and has trample. Nice. This is a nice, solid little card. I would give this like a three out of five, two out of five in construct or uh, limited. Fuck, I keep saying constructed first. Zero out of five in constructed, don't place in constructed. But in limited, the reason I'd give this like a three out of five is there's enough constellation cards, and this replaces itself, that you're kind of getting a free proc. Trample can be very, very nice. We can put it on the board. So that we have an 11-6 with Trample. Seems nice. Skola Grove Dancer, one in the green for a 2-2. Two, two. Whenever a land card is put into your graveyard from anywhere, you gain one life. Eh. Put the top card of your library into your graveyard. Eh. It's a 2-2 two, two for two with uh, some weird ass side effects. Two out of five in limited, zero out of five in constructed. It's an enchantment creature, constellation proc. <laughs> Voracious Typhon. 4-4 four, for four, 4. Nice. 2 and a pair of green. You can exile it, and it escapes with 3 plus 1 plus 1 counters on it. Oh, yeah. Oh, baby. This is a very solid little limited card. 4 out of 5 in limited. This is a 0 out of 5 in constructed, because just put a questing beast in your deck. Just put the questing beast in there. The fact that it can escape is a 7-7. Seven, seven. Recursion. We love it. Warbriar Blessing. One in the green for just a ridiculous fashion statement. Enchant creature you control. Enters the battlefield. Enchanted creature fights up to one target creature you don't control. Enchanted creature gets plus zero, plus two. Four. Normally when Sean Plot sees removal, Sean Plot gets very, very excited. Um, but Prey Upon is a card that if you put too many in you just have a bunch of your fight guy can fight that fight guy and then you just don't have any creatures or you don't have enough big stuff this depends enough on your creatures that um it's a little bit coin consoining so um maybe even three out of five but i think there's enough upside from constellation and shit that four out of five seems pretty nice constructed zero out of five as usual Wolf, Willow, Haven, one in a green, enchant land. Whenever enchanted land is tapped for mana, its controller adds an additional green. Oh. That's a very nice ramp card for Sean. I want two mana ramp that sticks. In order of stickiness, lands are the most sticky. Enchantments on lands are the second most sticky. And creatures like Lanor Else are the least sticky of my list of three. So this is a way for on turn two, I can just play a Wolf Willow Haven. Constructed wise, I'd give it a two out of five for that reason. It's I'm actually very excited to be able to put in a little green. Um, you can also sack it to create a two two green wolf creature token. Activate this ability only during your turn. It's an extremely mediocre side effect. Um, so I mean, I'd give this like a. 1 out of 5 limited, 2 out of 5 constructed, for that reason. There you have it. Ah, yes, the gold-colored cards. Now, we normally stop this show at 7, but Day 9 is on fire! I will be doing all the gold cards, and there's probably going to be some colorless thingies at the end. Gold cards is often where the power comes from. Before we do that, I'm going to get some water so I can finish strong.
Yes, we've done all of Wooburg, and now it is time for the multicolored. Mm. Acolyte of Affliction 2, a black and a green. For a human cleric, when Acolyte of Affliction enters the battlefield, put the top two cards of your library into your graveyard. Then you may return a permanent card from your graveyard to your hand, and it's a 2-3. Okay, so this is a solid limited card. It's a 2-3 for 4, which is a bit mediocre, but it allows you to put another card from your graveyard back into your hand. There's enough bomb stuff that an Acolyte of Affliction is a great way to get the bomb thing back into the hand to be recast, and you also have this body left over. So for that reason, I give this like a 4 out of 5 in Limited. You could argue it's a 3 out of 5 due to the fact that, well, shit, Sean, what if I just don't have that bomb? What if I just have some mediocre stuff in the graveyard? It's green-black. Green-black has a lot of big creatures. You play a big creature, it dies, you recur it with Acolyte of Affliction. I like it quite a bit. Constructed? No. It's very slow. I spend four mana and get a two, three, and then I can recast something. In, in Constructed, what you really want is just a thing in the graveyard goes straight to the battlefield. That feels good for Constructed. So this, four out of five, and an O out of five, zero out of five. Allure of the Unknown. Three, black and a red. Reveal the top six cards of your library. Ooh. An opponent exiles a non-land card from among them. Okay. Then you put the rest into your hand. That opponent may cast the exiled card without paying its mana cost. Oh. 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 What in the fuck? This is goofy. Yeah, I agree with you, Ang. This is a goofy little card. Oh my god. That's so weird. That's like cover your body in baby oil and give a stranger a knife and you also get three knives. Now fight. And I'm like, what the baby oil? I'm just caught up on this one. All right. Um, limited. What do we think about this? Holy shit. Limited, I actually think this is pretty good. I think this is pretty good limited. Because you're getting you're, you're you're basically draw five, give your opponent a free spell. It's hard for me to imagine I mean you, you they basically get your best card, you get some shitty cards. So maybe it's like two out of five in limited because getting five cards is nice, but if you get like land, 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 good card, bad card, and your opponent just casts a free good card, then you really, you really screwed the pooch, man. You sprained your dumb little ankles on that move. Um, so probably a two out of five in limited. Maybe a one out of five in constructed. Same thing, one out of five. I will absolutely build an Allure of the Unknown deck. I know what you want. I understand what content you're here for. But still, what? Ashiok, Nightmare Muse, Planes Walk in Time. Three of blue and a black. We can create a two, three blue and black nightmare creature token with whenever this creature attacks or blocks, each opponent exiles the top two cards of their library. Right away, a five mana creature, a five mana Planeswalker, that starts with five loyalty is a lot that can then plus one to get to six loyalty which is a lot to make a creature already we're like hey that's pretty good um and the fact that exiling is happening is not that relevant to me but whatever minus three return target non-land permanent to its owner's hand then that player exiles a card from their hand wow Minus seven, you may cast up to three face down cards your opponents own from exile without paying your mana cost. Oh. Wow. 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 So, our 2-3 blue and black nightmare creature token. Exile on all sorts of shit. When we minus 7, we get to play it for free. Whoa. If our opponent has anything in adventure land, those things live in exile. 
So now you can cast them from exile as well. If your opponent freaking had any cards in exile from any effect, wow. I really like this card a lot. Now, in limited, this is a very obvious 5 out of 5 because you play something that has a very high loyalty, at which point you just start pumping out 2, 3 blue and black nightmare creature tokens. And that's good enough, right? It's good enough. It's good enough. Um, the minus 3 is very fascinating to me because there are occasionally circumstances... Well, actually, if you're in a Demir control deck or a Demir slowness deck, they'll often have an empty hand, and then you just, like, bounce the thing to the hand, and then it's goodbye, and it's gone, it's exiled. There's also that one black and one colorless card that actually exiles from the opponent's hand. If you remember, we were reviewing that card about six hours ago. Um, I really... I mean, the fact that you could just bounce the thing, and then it just gets exiled is pretty pretty awesome but more often I think you're just going to go plus one plus one minus seven I mean, that's just fucking ridiculous I mean that's ridiculous yeah this is this. I, I'd say this is a four out of five limited card fuck five out of five limited card four out of five constructed card the reason I'm going to say four out of five constructed is there are a lot of Planeswalkers that are already making creatures. We have Garrick that is making dogs. We have Liliana that is making zombies. Um, those are six mana. This is five mana. But, like, Garrick has some very clean creature removal. Destroy a creature, draw a card. Liliana has... Each player sacrifices two creatures. Those... Things are better than this minus three return target non-land permanent to its owner's hand. Then that player exiles a card from their hand. Um, so yeah, I think that this is has some weakness in constructed for sure. Atris Oracle of Half Truths, two a blue and a black. Ooh, a three two with menace. I like menace. When Atrus Oracle Half Truths enters the battlefield, target opponent looks at the top three cards of your library and separates them into a face down pile and a face up pile. Ooh. Put one pile into your hand and the other into your graveyard. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Okay, so um, at worst, this card is four mana, three, two with menace, draw one. The gimmick is so sweet, I'm going to give it just five out of fives across the board. Screw rational evaluation. We're probably never going to see it have playing constructed, but whatever. This is just so sweet. This is so cool. I mean, come on. I mean, that is that is really tight. Come on. An Atrus Oracle of Half-Truths half with an allure of the unknown. Do you realize the dumb shit we can produce? You and me together? Ugh. Unbelievable. A bronze hide lion for a green and a white. It's a cat creature. Cat tribals, what up? I see you. I see you, Knox. Fuck. It's a 3-3 three, three for two? <gasps> Move over, centaurs. Cats are here to stay. Bronze hide lion gains indestructible until end of turn. When Bronzehide Lion dies, return it to the battlefield. It's an aura enchantment with enchant creature you control. And do this change until the end of turn, and it loses all other abilities. It's the new Adanto Vanguard. It's the new Adanto Vanguard. It's the new Adanto Vanguard. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, five out of five and limited because it's a three, three for two. Playing it on curve is so sick. You get it out, it becomes indestructible. And when it dies, it helps make your bigger, thicker, scarier, more frightening creatures indestructible. Yeah, 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 yeah. Mmm. Bronzehide Lion is so good, thick, sick, solid, and tight that I want to play with this card all night. Slesnia Tokens, hell yeah. This is it. I love this guy. Oh my god. Ethanet says, just as a note, if you flicker this while it's an aura, it comes back as a creature. Hmm. Hmm. 
Now, in case you don't know that reference, <laughs> that is from Agra in the Jim Henson extravagantly awesome show, uh, The Dark Crystal. That movie. It's very, it's very dark for a kid's, kid's movie, but it's like really good. <laughs> Looks like Gelfling. Smells like Gelfling. Maybe you are Gelfling. <laughs> God, I fucking love that movie. I've watched the movie like a thousand times. It's so good. Anyways, that's really good. Calyx, Destiny's Hand. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Lando Calrissian's got a new getup today. Two, a green and a white. For four loyalty, plus one. Look at the top four cards of your library. You may reveal an enchantment card from among them. Put that card into your hand. Put the rest on the bottom of your library in a random order. Oh. Is this an enchantment creature? No, it's just a cat. It's just a cat. Minus three exile target creature or enchantment you don't control until target enchantment you control leaves the battlefield. Okay, I turn any enchantment into a prison. Hmm. Minus seven return all enchantment cards from your graveyard to the battlefield. Okay. Hmm. This is a weird one. In limited, I just broadly think this is like a four out of five in limited because there's enough enchantment creatures that Calyx Destiny's Hand will frequently find an enchantment creature in your deck. Like maybe it draws one, maybe it doesn't. And then when it gets to minus seven, you're gonna get a whole bunch of enchantment and enchantment creatures back to the battlefield, okay. Uh, the minus three to exile target creature or enchantment you don't control until target enchantment you do control leaves the battlefield. This is another good way to just say, I have an enchantment creature. I take your thing, stick it under my enchantment creature. I think that... Um, I think that this can do something. I think this can do something in limited. So I'm going to do four out of five. It has a lot of weird conditions surrounding it with all the enchantment references, but there's enough enchantment creatures that, hey, I'm feeling it. But in Constructed, this is weird. This is, this is a really weird one. You guys know I love Outlaws Merriment. You all know that I fucking am into Outlaws Merriment. And suddenly, if I'm doing a Naya enchantment deck, and I'm like Calyx Destiny's handing to look for Outlaw's Merriment, I mean, and then I'm like putting things under my Outlaw's Merriment layer like O-rings, like, I don't know, man. I don't know. Uh, I, I'd still probably give it a 2 out of 5, because it needs a lot of help. You need to have a lot of enchantment things, because as we've talked about just a wee bit ago, I'm not really feeling a lot of enchantment creatures. I'm not really feeling a lot of it. I'm not just, oh, fuck, yes, this enchantment creature is the best. No, 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 no not really doing that. Um, so it's hard for me to see the creatures that it would nab. But, you know, it's something enchantment-y, so... I'm going to call this 2 out of 5 in Constructed. Need some help. Dalakos, Crafter of Wonders. One, a blue and a red. Add double colorless, spend this mana only to cast artifact spells or activate abilities of artifacts, equipped creatures you control have flying in haste. It's a 2-4 for 3. Okay, so... My, my, my lifetime of playing Magic has taught me that anytime you see something reference artifacts... It sucks until you go to an eternal format and it's banned. This is my understanding of how these things work. <laughs> like, I, I, so I look at this and I don't fucking know. This is like maybe my fourth question mark out of five. I mean, we don't have a lot of equipment and limited, so who cares if equipped creatures you control have flying in haste? Have we even seen any equipment? We haven't gotten to the artifacts yet, so like, mm -hmm. uh. And we can do stuff. I we haven't seen fucking artifacts. We haven't seen any of these things. Like, so, like, I don't know. Like, I have no idea. Uh, 
is there an is it ember cleave deck man i don't know <laughs> like you play dalakos another creature attacks reducing ember cleave from four colorless to three colorless and you tap two and now it's three mana and then you fucking play it and it's flying and hasting and it I don't fucking know. I have no clue. I mean, it's it's probably two out of five and limited, and I'll, I will never have any clue. I'm just going to move past it. Devourer of memory. A black and a blue. Whenever one or more cards are put into your graveyard from your library, Devourer of memory gets plus one, plus one until end of turn and can't be blocked. Pay three. Put the top card of your library into your graveyard. This is a like potential to end the game in limited. This is this is a good three out of five kind of card because it can end the game. Doesn't do it quickly. There's some mill. It works with the mill. You're gonna have to put up a lot of other defensive stuff. I just, it's very solid. I feel very positive about this card. It needs a lot of help to like get there because you're pretty much only gonna be able to do the damage on uh, if you do make it unblockable. Um, It's possible to like put one in the graveyard, get plus one, plus one, put another in the graveyard, get plus one, plus one. Um, there's possibilities to do that. But still, it requires a lot of help and it's slow. But you can get there. So three out of five. Ooh, Dream Trawler. A lot of priciness. Two, a pair of blue, a pair of white. Flying lifelink. Whenever you draw a card, Dream Trawler gets plus one, plus one until end of turn. <gasps> Whenever Dream Trawler attacks, draw a card. <gasps> Discard a card. Dream Trawler gains Hexproof until end of turn. Tap it. Ooh. Yeah, that's pretty good. That's pretty good. Um... Okay. So whenever you draw a card, it gets plus one, plus zero. Oh. Whenever attacks, draw a card. So if you attack, it's a four, five with flying lifelink. So a four, five flying life linker for six, even in limited, is a five out of five. Bomba, bomba. Um, oh, it's five out of five because it's a five, five flyer with lifelink because you drew it at the start of your turn. Nice. Nice catch. So that means that it's like a 5-5 flying lifelinker, which is amazing. You don't even need to worry about the ground unlimited. You just keep bonking inward. Um, it has some merit in Constructed as well, because I can just play it, and if my opponent tries to target it, I just chuck a thing, and now it's hexproof. It doesn't get around sweepers. Hard to cast. Six mana is a lot to cast. I mean, this might be something where you cast like one, or include one of them in a Constructed. Azorius deck, and even then only circumstantially. Like, if there's a lot of, <clears throat> excuse me, black and red based decks in the format, those tend to have spot removal, you know, exile this creature, deal 8 damage to this creature, that sort of thing. I mean, it's drawing a lot. So this this could be like a one of, it kind of reminds me of uh, Nezahal, Primal Tide. Not nearly as good as that one, but still reminds me of it. Two out of five constructed. Two out of five. I can see circumstances where it would be valuable, but maybe it's not valuable enough. Enigmatic Incarnation. Two a green and a blue. At the beginning of your end step, if you, you may sacrifice an, another enchantment. If you do, search your library for a creature card with converted mana cost equal to one plus sacrificed enchantments converted mana cost. Put that card onto the battlefield and shuffle your library. So it's a four mana card that doesn't do anything. We can, like, upgrade our enchantments into creatures. But we can pretty much only do this once on that particular creature chain. Because if I bring out a regular old creature, it's no longer an enchantment. So I can't sacrifice it on the next step. And 
there's not that many good enchantment creatures. Boo! 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 I think the only... here Here is the only situation in Limited... The only situation in Limited... The only situation in Limited... Where this makes sense to me... Sean, Sean Plot, where it makes sense to me... Is you will win the game if you get your god out. So you just play this thing... Sack an enchantment to go snatch your god. That's the, so it's like a one out of five card in limited. In constructed, this will never be played except on the next episode of What the Deck. <laughs> oh, fuck. This is not a card that should be included in a deck that is playing Magic the Gathering. Uh, yeah, we're going we're gonna, to we're hit that with a double O. That is, that is a seriously Brit British Asian card, man. Double O out of five. Utropia, the twice favored. One, a green and a blue. Legendary creature, human wizard for 2-2. Two, two. Constellation, whenever an enchantment enters the battlefield under your control, put a plus one plus one counter on target creature. That creature gains flying until end of turn. Oh, yeah. Oh, my God. Oh, ooh, yeah. Limited card. We're getting... Five out of five. That's right. Cool moves, day nine. Only the coolest for you. Oh my god, that's so good. Utropia, the twice favorite. So this is excellent because it's similar to um, some other things that we've seen where, like, as enchantments are in the battlefield, things are continuing to grow. So there's, like, a permanence to it. A 2-2 two, two for three isn't awful alone. So it's like, okay. Um... So this is, this feels nice. Like if you just have some um, enchantment creatures, a few other flash enchantments, I mean, this can, Utropia, if she doesn't get immediately killed, I mean, she can easily get three, four counters on things. So I, I like this. And plus flying, I'm a big fan of flying. Limited. <laughs> Gallia of the Endless Dance, yas! That is the most perfect encapsulation of yas. That is yas as art. Yas. Four, a red and a green for a 2 2. Haste. There's satyrs you control, get plus one, plus one, and have haste. Ooh. Whenever you attack with three or more creatures, you may discard a card at random if you do draw two cards. Suddenly I'm remembering those 1 1 satyrs that can't block. Ah. There's no success like excess. Oh, God, that's so good. So good. So may yeah, maybe there's a Seder tribal. Oh! Oh! By the way, I just love the implied motion. This guy's carrying a plate of food, and she puts her arm around him and is like, dance! And he drops his shit. Oh. So dynamic. Hack toes. Enemy of toes. Hack toes the unscarred. Double red, double white, a 6-1. Hacktoes, the unscarred attacks each combat of Able. As Hacktoes enter the battlefield, choose two, three, or four at random. Hacktoes has protection from each converted mana cost other than the chosen number. Whoa. Wow, Hacktoes. Wow. Huh. Oh my god. Hushbringer plus Hacktoes gives you protection from everything. Hushbringer does not make him invincible. If a number isn't chosen, it has no protection. Oh, shit. Uh, whatever. Regardless, let's say you play it and you choose two. It has protection from one, three, four, five, six, seven, and so on.
Wow. Wow. Holy hacktoes. Protection does not get around wrath effects. Granted. That's an interesting card. Uh, I, uh, I suppose in limited this is mediocre because it's just like a 6-1. It's just going to smash itself into whatever is supposed to kill it. Oh, I see how the ruling works. As Hactos enters the battlefield, choose one of these numbers at random. Has protection from each converted mana cost other than the chosen number. Since there is no chosen number, the, that line of text can't even happen. Um, yeah, it feels like this would be mediocre because there's a lot of two, three, and four mana creatures. There's a lot of two, three, or four mana creatures uh, in limited. So it feels like it would just bonk into that. In constructed, I don't fucking, I don't fucking know. I don't know, this, this card seems weird and hilarious. So I'm going to give it a 1 out of 5 in Limited and a 1 out of 5 in Constructed. It just seems hilarious. Hero of the Next Born. 1, a red, and a white. When Hero of the Next Born enters the battlefield, create a 1-1 one, one white human and soldier creature token. Woo! Whenever you cast a spell that targets Hero of the Next Born, creatures you control get plus 1, plus 0 until end of turn. Boo! Um... Mm -mm. Mm -mm. There needs to be a lot of one ones coming up, man. A lot of one ones. Feather deck, man. Feather deck just wants stuff that gets hype when you cast things on it. You want, you want that legionnaire that's getting plus one, plus one permanently every time it gets targeted. Oh, you want that shit, man. What you don't want is things to get plus one, plus O oh temporarily and then just lie back down and cry. No. This is just a normal card. This is like a three out of five, maybe. A two out of five, maybe. I'd plus say three out of five in limited due to the fact that it is an enchantment creature. Then, in constructed, a zero out of five. You're never going to see it. And if you do, uh, don't believe it. Don't believe what your eyes are seeing. Oh my god, there's a two-colored god. Cool. Clotheth. God of destiny. One, a red and a green. Indestructible 4-5. As long as your devotion to red and green is less than seven, Clotheth isn't a creature. At the beginning of your pre-combat main phase, exile target card from a graveyard. If a land was exiled... Add red or green. Otherwise, you gain two life, and Clothus deals two damage to each opponent. Wild. Absolutely wild. So this, like, can just keep exiling and eventually kill someone? Oh, what? What? Er? Um, I mean, it's probably a 4 out of 5 in limited due to the fact that you can just constantly be pinging. Things die frequently in limited. And, I mean, if things stall out, it just becomes a creature. It's 3 mana. The ramp is not that relevant. Um, If nothing get, gets exiled, I assume that nothing happens. So you can exile stuff from their side, stuff from your side. This could deal a lot of damage in limited. I think this is probably 4 out of 5 in limited. Probably 4 out of 5. It se seems really nice. Um, in constructed, I mean, I have no idea. Absolutely no idea. I 
I mean, because you'd want stuff in the graveyard. The ramp, like, r this is hard as fuck to, to ramp with. Because, like, what are you going to do? Like, turn one, put things into your graveyard. Turn two, put more things into your graveyard. Turn three, play Clothis. And then exile something. And then ping for two. Like, I don't, I don't know. I think that the way this is probably going to work is if you're like a gruel aggro deck you could like run two of these in constructed and like start to ping I mean gain two life and deal two damage is pretty sick if you're doing it every turn for free I'm gonna call this a two out of five and constructed. It feels like it's gotta be able to like do something. It feels like it's gotta be able to like do something. Um, yeah, may maybe in Gruel Sacrifice, maybe, I don't know. I feel this has to exist somewhere in constructed, but I, I don't know how. In limited, I can see how it works. Um, all right. Croxa, uh, Titan of Death's Hunger, a black and a red for a 6-6. Six, six. What? When Croxa enters the battlefield, sack it unless it escaped. Whenever Croxa enters the battlefield or attacks, each opponent discards a card. Then each opponent who didn't discard a non-land card this way loses three life. Huh. Huh, 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 huh. Well, each opponent discards a non land card this way, too, huh? Okay, so. Each opponent discards a card. Each opponent who didn't discard a non-land card this way. So if you chuck a land, you lose three life. Play this with Lazav the Multifarious. Interesting. So you could play this on turn two to like just ping for some damage. You, the exile five other cards from your graveyard is the hard part. I, I I don't I don't think this is actually very good. I don't think this is actually very good. Um, It seems mediocre in Yeah, I mean if you can get a Hushbringer down and then you can play Croxa. Constructed, I think this is a one out of five. There's probably a way to make it work, but like black red typically is a very aggressive archetype as is implied by this card text, and then double black, double red, exile five other cards. That's tough. That's like really tricky. Um, maybe, maybe the way that, that you play Croxa is in a Grixis reanimator deck. If you play this with Tamiyo, I mean, you're already a four color deck. I mean, that's, it's kind of weird. Like, you, there just needs to be ways to fill up your graveyard. So I think like a Grixis reanimator that's already filling up. So you never cast it for two. Just always. Um, reanimator would still force sack. N not what I mean. Reanimator decks fill the graveyard. Which means that on turn four, you could do something like play uh, a card that reanimates one of your really nice threats like Dracuseth. Or if you don't have any of those reanimation cards, you just hard cast Croxa from the 
uh, graveyard because you do have five other cards in your graveyard on turn four. Um, God, this card's weird. Okay, I'm going to upgrade it and construct it to two out of five. As I've talked about it a little bit, I, I, I can see something... A 6-6 six, six that just immediately forces a discard is sick. If I'm having access to blue in the Grixis decks, this is already just filling up my graveyard with, with juice. And some of those reanimator decks are interesting. Yeah, so, I mean, there, there's something there. In, in limited... Fuck, I don't know, three maybe... play it, it enters, you sack it, it also enters and forces a discard, and then you can bring it back, and then it kind of sticks. I can see this being very threatening and limited. It's a little bit circuitous. Getting five cards in the graveyard is a little tricky. Uh, I can imagine this working in limited, but you, you don't think of it as a turn two play. You think of it as like, you know, later on you just play it and it immediately happens and then you replay it. And yeah, so I'd say four out of five in limited probably has some merit in constructed two out of five. God, this is fascinating. All right. Konoros, Hound of Athreos. One a white and a black. Legendary creature, dog. It's a three, three for three. Cool. Vigilance, Menace, Lifelink. Ooh. Creature cards in graveyards can't enter the battlefield. Players can't cast spells from their graveyards. What a good boy. Oh, what a good boy. I'm going to say that this is a extremely solid limited card. This is, this is your perfect four out of five card. It has vigilance, so it can attack and block as a three, three. There's a lot of two threes, two twos, two ones, one threes that this gets past and also blocks. Menace is great, lifelink. Um, prevents you, enemy, from being able to cast the escape cards. Um, and also prevents me from being able to cast any of my escape cards. Okay, I fucking misread this. All right, it's three out of five. I'm going to say three out of five. It's a three out of five in limited. Because it completely owns your own escape plan. Um, whoopsie doopsie. I can imagine also there being matchups and decks where you want this. Like, the Cat Oven decks is an obvious choice. The cats that enter the battlefield, dude? No, they can't. They can't at all. And it's not even a... Um, difficult card to cast. It's one, a white, and a black. So, I mean, I, I can definitely see some merit. So, I, I think a 3 out of 5 and limited 2 out of 5 and constructed is where I'm at. Deesh. Mischievous Chimera. A blue and a red for a 2-2 two, two with flying. Whenever you cast your first spell during each opponent's turn, Mischievous Chimera deals 1 damage to each opponent, scry 1. Huh. Seems okay. Seems okay. Seems okay. Seems okay. Seems okay. I'm going to contrast this with uh, a, a card I was reviewing, Jesus, like five hours ago, which was a blue card that whenever we cast our first spell on our opponent's turn, we draw a card. It was some sort of horse thing. Um... What's really nice about this card compared to the horse thing is the horse thing was three mana. This is two mana. It's a two two and it's flying so we can continue to ping with it. So this feels like a nice way to go. Hey, I have some three mana plus counters. On turn two, I'm going to play the Mischievous Chimera. And I'm going to protect it with counters and just keep zapping you while I deal the damage. Like everything in this seems to be consistent with the idea of being able to break through and to deal damage. I mean, a two two flyer for two is already nice. 2-2 uh, two, two flyer for 2 that can like help me 
scry and ping and all that shit. You could even just run an is it deck that doesn't have counter spells. It just tries to blow up the shit out of somebody. Um, you know, like even a, a Phoenix style deck, like an Arc Light Phoenix. Is Arc Light Phoenix out? I think it's in. Pretty sure it's in. I'm just amazed I haven't seen it in that long. Doink. Pulacranos Unchained. Ah, yes. Two. A black and a green. Pulacranos enters the battlefield with six plus one plus one counters on it. It escapes with 12 plus one plus one counters on it instead. Wow. If damage would be dealt to Pulacranos while it has a plus one plus one counter on it, prevent that damage and remove that many plus one plus one counters from it. Okay. So it's a six six for four that rapidly shrinks. Pay three, Polacronos fights another target creature. Escape for six, exile six cards. Uh, Cheap-ish escape cost, like it's a four mana, and then it has a six mana escape, but exile six cards. Increasingly sounding like a lot. This just seems okay. This just maybe it's actually fine. This is probably a five out of five because it's a very slow but guaranteed removal of a lot of shit. You know, I play Polacronos. It's a six six. My opponent uh, attacks. I can block a dude and then I can fight another smaller dude and kill it when it comes back I can probably fight two more dudes and kill those yeah it's probably five out of five in limited in constructed I guess Zero out of five. I don't think this is going to make a showing in Constructed. I don't even think it's going to make a showing in Constructed at all. Not good. Get out of town. Do goofy stuff. Rise to glory. This is exactly how I feel when I wake up with the motivation to shave today. Two, a white and a black. Choose one or both. Return target creature card from your graveyard to the battlefield. Return target or card from your graveyard to the battlefield. All right, I hear you. Um, returning a creature from the graveyard to the battlefield is very nice for what we were just discussing, which is the reanimator decks. More ways to reanimate other than like bo brick to bone or bone to bone. I don't remember what the name of it is. It's something to do with bones. It's like crack your bones and it like <laughs> puts a dude in your hand and puts a dude out onto the battlefield. Rise to Glory is another way to resurrect. Return target or a card from your graveyard to the battlefield is Blood to Bones. Thank you. Blood to Bones. Blood to Bones. Blood to Bones. Bone to Bone. Welcome to the only skeleton-based dating website. Bone to Bone. Um, where all the skeletons just match and type, want a bone? <laughs> you know what would happen. Um, anyways, return target aura card. This is not there's not that many there's not that many aura cards that are constructed fist pumpable, so I'll have to take a peek, but that, that one's probably never gonna happen. But in limited, this is a very solid card. Probably five out of five. Probably five out of five in limited. Probably one out of five in constructed. Just a really juicy return the boy to the battlefield. There's a lot of auras in limited born. Siona, captain of the Pilius. One a green and a white for a 2 2. When Siona enters the battlefield, look at the top seven cards of your library. You reveal an aura card from among them and put it into your hand. Put the rest on the bottom randomly. Whenever an aura you control becomes attached to a creature you control, just create so many creature tokens. This is one, one of those solid ones, sort of fine, sort of like okay, right? It's a 2 2 for 3, which is sort of fine, limited wise. You guaranteed get another card drawn, which is pretty good. So it's a 2-2 that replaces herself. 
and then you play the creature, or you play the aura and you get the 1-1 one, one creature, so okay. So okay. 4 out of 5 limited, maybe worse. Making a bunch of 1-1s one is not exciting me as much today, but a 2-2 two -two that's just making a 1-1 one -one and making a 1-1 one -one and making a 1-1 one -one and replacing itself. It's just a bunch of little tiny stuff that would accumulate in a Katamari Damachi style way enough for me to go, oh, it's pretty It's pretty 4 out of 5. Constructed, I just can't imagine this ever being a constructed card under any circumstance. Maybe if there's one mana auras, but you need you, like you need to grow fast and do stuff quickly. And like three mana for a two two and constructed. Ugh. This is no Judith. This is no Judith. I mean, I have a hard time finding any aura in my in my brain banks that feel good and constructed. Slaughter Priest of Magus. Look at this absolutely out of control Minotaur. This is a chunky, angry person. A black and a red for a two two. Whenever you sacrifice a permanent, Slaughter Priest of Mogus gets plus two, plus zero oh until end of turn. Oh, shit. Sacrifice another creature or an enchantment. Slaughter Priest of Mogus gains first strike until end of turn. Ah. Uh, ah. Uh, more tools for Rakdos sacrifice. God. Oh. Yeah, I mean, this is going to be a little bit painful with the cats. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, this is incredible. Three out of five in constructed. Three out of five in limited. It's a bear in limited with some upside. There's already a sacrifice deck with a lot of good juice in it. I don't know what the Slaughter Priest of Mogus is going to contribute because we got to cut some other stuff. Staggering Insight. Oh, this one's so good. A white and a blue enchant creature. Enchanted creature gets plus one, plus one, and has lifelink, and whatever this creature deals combat damage to a player, draw a card. It's a curious obsession without the force need to attack every turn. So cards like this can run away with games in limited. I really like this. Um, it can be tricky to pull off, but white and blue tends to have the most flyers. So... You know, if your opponent is tapped out on their turn, you can often just play the Staggering Insight attack, and it has immediately redrawn itself. Um, so I, I would give this a 3 out of 5. This seems like a very solid little card that can run away with things, but, you know, if you play it, attack, draw a card, then your opponent shoots down whatever bird is equipped the Staggering Insight, then, you know, it's 2 for 2. You had a card replace itself, and then they used a card to kill your bird, so, you know, it's fine. So that's good. In terms of constructed, I'm really unsure. When I first saw Curious Obsession, I was just like, nah. And Curious Obsession was like freaking ridiculous. So maybe there's something like a feather deck that runs a st No, that wouldn't make any sense. Feather already has plenty of opportunities to draw. I don't know. Cards like this have such insane upside. But it's also two mana, which is just a shitload. Probably not going to see constructed playability. Zero out of five. So three out of five limited. Zero out of five constructed. Uro, Titan of Nature's Wrath. Jesus. One a green. And a blue for a 6-6. Six, six. When Uro enters a battlefield, sacrifice it unless it escaped. Whenever Uro enters the battlefield or attacks, you gain three life and draw a card. Then you may put a land card from your hand onto the battlefield. <gasps> okay. This is a three mana growth spiral. You play it. It enters the battlefield, so you get to draw and you can play a land. It also lets you draw three life. Or excuse me, gain three life. So this has some real merit. This is a weird roundabout ramp card. This seems okay and limited. Probably four out of five because you can eventually exile five cards, get this puppy back, draw a card, gain three life. So I mean, it's probably four out of five, maybe just five out of five. I mean, shit. You're drawing a card and gaining three life and ramping like worst case scenario. Yeah, that's, that's got to be a 5 out of 5 in limited. Uh, constructed, probably 3 out of 5. 
starting to get tired, so this is where I'm starting to just give up with deep, rich, fantastic analysis. I've been talking for 7 hours and 29 minutes, essentially, without break. But this is a really fascinating way to ramp and bamp it up. <clears throat> Not instant speed, which makes it a little bit different than the growth spiral. Do I have any water? Thank God. Warden of the Chain, a 3-mana 4-4 four, four with Trample. Warden of the Chain can't attack unless you control another creature with power 4 or greater. <gasps> yes. Yes. I like this card. If you are green splash red for Warden of the Chain, this is amazing. This is an easy 4 out of 5. There's also so many other things that say if you have something with power 4 or greater, do cool stuff. So even if Warden of the Chain isn't doing anything, it's just a big blocking wall. It says it can't attack. It doesn't say it can't attack or block. It can also block. Um, wow. I really like this one. I'd give it a 4 out of 5 in limited. Constructed, 0 out of 5. Run Gruel Spellbreaker, you lunatic. Altar of the Pantheon. Ah, we've done all the multicolored. We've done all of our Woobergs. And now it's time for the artifacts. Altar of the Pantheon. 3 mana artifact. Your devotion to each color and each combination of colors is increased by one. Add one mana of any color. If you control a god, a demigod, or a legendary enchantment, you gain one life. Oh, that's so nice. That's so nice. Okay, so this is the three mana, get more mana card. What was the, what was the name of the, just the, the mana geode thing? Manolith, there we go. Um, De Devotion is upped, which probably does some stuff. Ah, uh, I mean. This is one out of fives across the board. This doesn't excite me. This is so, so situational. Bronze Sword. All right. Equip creature has plus two, plus oh. It is a one mana. Equip three. Historically, I shit on cards like this. But um, if, you, if you are playing a limited format that's really grindy, a sword like this can just be incredible can just be incredible. If you have a flyer that's like a 1-1 one, one or a 2-1 and you just put a bronze sword on it, it's like so good. But this is slow as all hell. 0 out of 5 constructed, maybe a 1 out of 5, 2 out of 5 in limited. Also, great point from Kar Kar Nar Nar. This enables your four power triggers much more frequently. Entrancing Liar, 3 mana. You may choose not to untap Entrancing Liar during your untap step. Sure. Pay X, tap target creature with power X or less. Doesn't untap during his controller's untap step for as long as Entrancing Liar remains tapped. That is slow, but pretty good. Never mind. This is very good. This is very good. I had to reread it for a second. So um, <clears throat> there's a card called Icy Manipulator that just you can tap something at the start of every turn. You can tap something at the start of every turn. So it's like you get tapped, you get tapped. You tap it to tap something else. But think through the steps of this. It's the end of my turn. Excuse me. It's the end of my opponent's turn. And they have a big dude that's tapped. Actually, fuck it. It's the end of my opponent's turn. They have a big dude. I spend X and tap my liar to tap their thing. It's now my turn. I choose to untap my enchanting liar. Now I have an untapped thing. They have a tapped big boy. I then immediately pay X and tap a different creature of theirs. So now they have two things that have been tapped by my liar. I pass the turn to them. On their untapped step, both those creatures have the following... Trigger. They don't untap during their untap step for as long as Entrancing Liar remains tapped. I am curious. Now, now that I've read that out loud, I thought that this meant that I could tap down multiple things. If that is how it works, it sounds insane. But here's the thing, I, I just want, I, I'm zooming in on the word remains. 
because it didn't remain tapped. Yeah, it didn't remain tapped. Okay, so you can only tap down one thing. You can only tap down one thing. I'm 99% I'm certain. I was rereading it through and then I was rereading it. When I first read it, I was like, oh, I stay tapped, you stay tapped. And then I started to think a little bit more and I was like, ooh, can I tap multiple things? And then I think the word remains is the big one. So you, you, you can do just one thing. Because if I tap one of your dudes down and then it's my turn and I untap the entrancing liar, immediately I have broken the restriction on this tapped dude. If it said it, um, it doesn't untap during its untapped step, if entrancing liar is tapped, that's different from remains tapped. You know what? Fuck this card. We're not even evaluating it. We've talked about it too long. Mirror shield, two mana. Artifact equipment. Quick creature gets plus O, plus two, and hex proof. And whenever a creature with death touch blocks or becomes blocked by this creature, destroy that creature. <laughs> oh my god. Okay, that's good. That's pretty cute, man. That's pretty cute. I mean, the fact that it kills death touch things is like whatever. It's not going to come up that much. This is just taking a trip to Flavortown, man, yeah. Blocked creature gets hexproof is somewhat nice. Equipment historically is just not constructed playable, period. This is like a 1 out of 5 limited 0 out of 5 constructed. It's just not very good. You have to spend a bunch of mana to play it, then a bunch of mana to equip it, and then you just get a little bit of toughness and hexproof ability. You have some durability. Mer. Mer. Nyx Lotus for 4 mana legendary artifact. Nyx Lotus enters the battlefield tap. Choose a color. Add an amount of mana of that color equal to your devotion to that color. This is a B more big card. This is a zero out of five in limited because there's just not a lot of X cost stuff that you could do amazingly. In constructed, this is a one out of five because someone's gonna figure out something hilarious. I would not think of this as ramp because it's like, you need a lot of living shit on the battlefield and you need to get to turn four. I mean, it's just like, there's so much stuff that needs to be true before this can come online. And then once that's happened, then you need something with X in your hand. I don't know. It just doesn't seem like it's going to be a thing. So I'm just going to get one out of five and constructed because someone, someone, someone will find a way. Shadow Spear. One mana. Equipped creature gets plus one, plus one, and has lifelink. Permanence your opponent control. Lose hexproof and indestructible until end of turn. Huh. Equip two. Huh. Oh, Trample and Lifelink. Nice. This is a solid little card. Again, uh, uh, these types of equipment I used to look down upon, but th the Equip 2 is cheap enough. Hmm. Yeah, sorry. I, I, I started thinking. Yeah, no, typically... I look down on these, but, you know, if you just give a thing, plus one, plus one, trample, lifelink, swing, it trades up. Equip another thing, plus one, plus one, trample, lifelink, swing in. I, this is kind of like two out of ten. Two out of five for me in limited. Zero out of five in constructed. Super zero out of five. Um, Permacy your opponent control, lose hexproof and indestructible until end of turn. There's probably some small situations in which that's valuable. Also, that effect, that one effect, doesn't have to have anything equipped it doesn't say equipped creature gets the following th th this um spear just has that capability um yeah the, i think that the the big excitement about that is that you can just play a shadow spear on turn one they play a god you remove the destructible and then you destroy affect it so you just delete the indestructibility from a from a god that seems neat Soul Guide Lantern. One mana when Soul Guide Lantern enters the battlefield. Exile target card from a graveyard. Exile each opponent's graveyard.
One out of five limited. Sideboard out of five for constructed. This is just like, just play this and blow up a graveyard. Um, I don't know, man. It's a sideboard card. I, You know what? I give up. I give up doing this review. It's time to punt. Everything else is a punt from here on out. Thaumaturg is familiar. Three mana, one, three. Flying. When Thaumaturg is familiar, enters the battlefield. Scry one. Five out of five in... I, who cares? Uh, it's a bird. It's like, it's a fine bird. It's a bird. It pecks you for one. You scry a little bit with it. No one's been excited about this in the history of birds. Definitely not going to show up in Constructed. If it's in your limited deck, you are not a good drafter. Something went wrong early on. You should watch some Channel Fireball videos to level up your game. Thundering Chariot. A four mana, three, three with first strike, trample, haste, crew one, tap a thing. <gasps> Is this good? I don't know. Maybe take your shitty bird that you just played last turn. Your one, three, and then you know what you're going to do? You're going to tap it. You're going to tell that bird to descend on the chariot and say, giddy on up. Tick -a -tick -a -tick -a -tick -a -tick -a tick Four mana, three, three with keywords? No. Zero out of five for limited. Six out of five for constructed. Traveler's Amulet. Sacrifice Traveler, Traveler's Amulet. My fucking tongue is exhausted. Search your library for a basic land card. Reveal it. Put it into your hand. Then shuffle your library. How embarrassing. This is a shameful card out of five. Wings of Hubris. Equipped creature has flying. Cool. Sacrifice Wings of Hubris. Equipped creature can't be blocked this turn. Sacrifice it at the beginning of the next end step. <laughs> Flavor. I actually love this card in Limited, man. The quick creature has flying. Give anything flying and flap it right on in. Sack it to get unblocked and smack it. Oh, yeah. Three out of five. I dare say even four out of five. I can't believe it's that common. Mm. Not terrible. Not terrible at all. Constructed doesn't see colorless cards. Labyrinth of Scofos. Tap it to add some colorless. Four. Tap remove target attacking or blocking creature from combat. Oh, and then this is where your Minotaur of Scofos gets in there. Oh. Oh my god. It's it's Spires of Orozka. It's expensive Spires of Orozka. Oh yeah. Oh baby. Oh. Oh, my. Mmm. Wow, five mana to make something not do nothing? Yeah. All right. If you run this in limited, that's hilarious. If you... Tikim says it doesn't untap? What do you mean it doesn't untap? Oh, you mean like Spires of Araska untaps and removes it from combat? Yeah. I thought you meant this land didn't untap. I'm like, tea keeping. How long? How long? All right. Oh, we have more temples. Well, these are all useful. These will all show up. These are all cool. Unknown shores. Add one mana of any color. All right. This is like a mana transmutation. Cool. Uh, these are all pretty. Ah, yeah, they're beautiful. I'm done. It's 8.30. I'm exhausted and I'm very hungry. I am going to go eat myself some dinner because I earned it. Then, tomorrow at 1 p.m., Wizards of the Coast is kindly providing me and several other humans with access to God accounts for a pre-release of Theros Beyond Death. We're going to be playing some limited. We're going to be building some mono green bullshit. We're going to be going ham. And then on Thursday, when that good old set releases, we're going to open packs. Packs, 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 packs. And then we're going to be doing some structured experimentation with all the cards that we have seen. 